Amen. 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 You can make it louder. Amen. Amen. Our dancing offering unto the Lord and our clapping offering. Make sure you are dancing.
our time we are moving to our next section which I believe that uh, is, a, is a very interesting topic that we are going to love very 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 well and we are following with us in our program we have love what love what love ah uh, why are we called saying it okay the brothers what brothers are there no brothers in this place? Brothers. Okay. Sisters. Sisters. All right. Brothers. Hallelujah. All right. So we have our mommies in the house. And right now we'll be introducing them to us, our wonderful mommy that the Lord will be using for us this afternoon. Uh, our first mommy, mommy, Dr. Engineer Ola Omole. Can we jam our hands together? <laughs> Hallelujah. And while our, we'll be waiting for our second mommy, mommy Adeshui. Can we jam our hands together? <laughs> All right, and I'm inviting our mommy right now to the stage for the seminar. Please, I want us to give a round of applause for Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we jam our hands together for mommy, mommy, Adeshui? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, our Heavenly Father, we are very much grateful unto you for the opportunity to be in your presence this afternoon to learn one very important and crucial thing 
as part of the inheritance that our fathers have delivered unto us. Thank you, Father, for this grace. And as we go into this session, Lord, I am praying, O God, that your presence will be with us in Jesus' name. I pray, O God, that you yourself, you will come and open our eyes and teach us this afternoon. I'm praying, O God, that everything that shall be delivered unto us today, Lord, we will not be confused about them. You will make it clearer to us what you want to, how you want us to go about our love life. Father, give us this grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I am praying, O oh God, that you will help me and my mommy here to deliver your mind unto your children. Amen. Father, let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. At the end of everything, O oh God, I pray that we will not be condemned on the last day. Amen. Father, let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, like we all know, I was surprised. They were asking us, don't we have the program? What are we doing now? Why is it only the sister that is talking that are talking? What of the brothers? What are we doing? Okay, sisters, keep quiet. What are we doing? Because we are in the church. Let's say it now. Even God himself is what? Is love. So love, you know, the way people look at love, they are thinking of the negative aspect. Love is a beautiful thing. If it is cultivated at the right time, God will help us in Jesus' name. So the topic before us, by the special grace of God, that the Lord will be helping myself and my mommy here, to open our eyes to certain things is uh, the power of waiting and choosing rightly. The power of waiting and choosing rightly. Amen. Amen. You know, we are talking about the inheritance of our fathers. And this particular topic is one of those truths or one of those important things that the fathers have delivered unto us, unto our hands, that is, as children of God, that we need to be patient, we need to wait, and we need to choose rightly when it comes to the matters of marriage. When it comes to the matters of marriage, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We are given two places to read. The first place is uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 to 18. And Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verse 4. I want us to read the two places before we go ahead. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13 to 18. 13 to 18. Yes. A foolish woman is Clamorous. Yes, 13 to 18, ma'am. Verse 13, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she will sit at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him, that wanted understanding, she said to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that our guests are in the depths of hell. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we continue, let's first of all look at this passage. If we, you know, when we are reading the scripture, it is always good to consider. Maybe the passages or the chapters or the verses before that uh, chapter or those verses. If we start from verse 1, you will see that this chapter, the whole chapter, is talking about two 
contrasting things. That is wisdom and folly. We are not reading the, the other verses. But just verse 1, it says, Wisdom had built that house, and she had hewn out her seven pillars. And so on and so on. In fact, if you look at verse 2, it says, She had killed her breast. Lest her beast, I mean, let's stop at that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we were told in that, especially in verse 17, that that woman was uh, inviting that person, was going to give that person a stolen water. That stolen water means that he is trying to introduce that person to something that should not be taken openly. Can somebody take uh, steal a thing and you eat it openly? No. So, that stolen water means even that thing seems enticing, seems satisfying, but it's forbidden. It's not a thing you are expected to take. It's not your own. Or it's not yet time for you to take that thing. So you are stealing it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, and the Bible tells us in uh, verse 18, it says, but he knoweth not that dead are there and that our guests are in the depths of hell. In other words, if he takes that stolen water, he will die. The end is destruction. The end is death. And the end is hellfire. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, the passage, uh, the passage is encouraged, is, it, it encourages us to embrace wisdom and discourages us to embrace uh, uh, folly, that we should not embrace folly. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then let's quickly look at that uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4. Songs 8, 4. It says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, until he pleases. The same way, if you look at it from verse 1, he was talking about a brother. He just looked at the brother. He said, ah, oh, I wish you were my mother's son. Then I will be free to hold you, to hug you, to kiss you, to, you know. You know if your brother comes from a journey, you can embrace him if it's your brother. If I see my brothers now and they come, I used to embrace them. My younger ones, my elder ones. But if I'm not married, even that I'm married, can I just hug any man in the church? No. Because it is forbidden. It's not right. It's not proper. So this particular place is now telling us that we should not disturb that person. Don't arouse, you know, the passion. Don't arouse that person sexually. Wait until the time comes. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this... Uh, Seminar, there are things we have to consider. We are meant to consider Omun and uh, what God, uh, Omuna changes and what God expects from us during these stages. We are also expected to look at, we are expected to look at the importance of abstinence from sex and the benefits of. Uh, Keeping yourself pure before marriage. We are also expected to look at why do we need to seek the face of God before marriage and steps to discover the will of God in our lives. As well as how to prepare ourselves for a God-centered marriage. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I hand over to our mommy, I have a few things to tell us. The first thing is that when we are talking about love, let's remember that the Bible says God is love. Love is a beautiful thing. Love is good. And in the church, among the brethren, it is expected that we practice love. There is no other thing we practice if we don't practice it in a godly manner that is love. Every other thing is lost. 
The Bible says anybody that does not abide in love, abide in death. So if you are practicing anything and it is not according to the will of God, that is not godly love. It is not love. It is lust. God will help us in Jesus' name. So I say, God, uh, love can be practiced either in a positive way or in a negative way. We have several examples in the Bible. The first example we're giving is uh, Amnon and Tamar. How many of us know the story of Amnon and Tamar? You, we don't know the story of Amnon and Tamar. Okay, Amnon is a son, is the firstborn of King David. And Tamar is a daughter of King David, but they are not from the same mother. So, Amnon love, love in quotes, Tamar, and has sexual desire towards Tamar, his sister. So, he pretended, no, he told his uh, friend that he just loves his sister. His, his, his heart is longing after his sister. And that friend told him that he should pretend as if he is sick. So that the king will ask Tamar to go and prepare food for him. And when Tamar came to prepare food for him, he raped Tamar. So, and you know that thing in Israel is a shameful thing. Absolutely years after. And he planned and killed uh, Amnon because of that thing. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another example is Reuben and the concubine of his father. You know when Jacob was blessing his children, it, it, it was Reuben he first mentioned. And he caused Reuben. We can see that one in uh, Genesis chapter 49 verse 3. We will not be able to read them, just write down because of our time. And uh, the story of Amnon and Tamar, we can see it in 2 Samuel 13, chapter 13. So, Reuben slept with the wife or the concubine of his father. And you see now that the end is caused. His father caused him. Another example is uh, Samson and Delilah. And another example is uh, Dinah and Shechem. How many of us have heard about the story of Dinah? These are things we should know. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can write it down. It's in uh, Genesis chapter 34. So what happened is that Dinah He's the only daughter of Jacob. You know when somebody has like 12 brothers and he's the only girl, how do you think that girl will be pampered at home? She will be cared for, she will be esteemed highly, you know, she, will, she will be pampered. Maybe she has always been staying at home when they go to work or go to feed or go to school or anything. One day she just decided that she just wants to see what is happening in town. And the Bible says she went and visited the daughters of the land. She went, she, she went to, we, have, I, we don't know, maybe they are doing birthday party or maybe they are doing marriage ceremony or one thing or the other. She left her house and went there. That was how uh, Shechem raped her. The Bible says Shechem is the prince of the land, not the ordinary person. So when you see things like that are happening, they are not ordinary. There are principalities and powers behind all those things. And that is why as children of God, you have to keep yourself. You, if you say you are a child of God, who could be a child of God? Let them know. Be the, a genuine one. Don't be one leg out, one leg in. If you are a child of God, all those things that you so show that somebody is a non-believer, let it not be seen in you. Don't put on an appearance that will not make you to differentiate between you and an unbeliever, especially that will attract opposite sex. That is how this girl was defied. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we have examples of people that also practice uh, positive love. In fact, one that really touched me is that of David and Jonathan. The Bible said the love that existed between them was even deeper than that of a man to a woman. 
And we can see that even after the death of Jonathan, David was still showing love to the family of Jonathan. God will help us in Jesus' name. So, in order not to waste, okay, let me just give out another example. We have Ruth and Naomi. Then we have Isaac. The Bible says he loved Rebecca and he was comforted after the death of his mother. Now, uh, before uh, I hand over to my mommy, I want us to talk about uh, hormonal changes. When we talk about hormonal changes, many of us we must have studied in biology that there are things that are called hormones. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So when we talk of hormonal changes, it is a biological or a science thing. It is not actually spelled out in the Bible. But the Bible tells us that God created man and woman. He created male and female. That means we are made differently. And that means the composition of our bodies are not the same. Another thing is that the Bible establishes that there are stages of life. If we look at um, Psalm 71, verses 17 and 18, let's quickly read that because we may not be able to read several passages. But let's read Psalm 71, 17 and 18. Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and neither to have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Praise the Lord. You see now that that place talked about some stages of life. Talk about the youthful age and talk about the adulthood. Now, even you yourself, you know there was a time you were a baby, a small baby. Even in our midst now, we see some babies that are still sucking breast. They are babies. There are some that are crawling. There are some that are going up and down. You are, you are, as you are carrying them, they are, you know, they are getting out of your hand. They are running around. And there are some... They are sitting down, listening to the word of God. And there are some of us that are fully matured. Some of us that are married. Some of us, you know, are older persons. We also see some of our fathers and mothers that they are already aged. So that tells us that there are stage, different stages in life. And as we develop from one stage to the other, the compositions of our bodies develop better, change better. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Maybe I should allow mommy to continue from there. <laughs> Thank you, mommy. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to add to what mommy said. And uh, I'm going to talk on, emphasize on two parts. Though I may have to add to what uh, she said, if we have time. But the first, the first part of it is the consequences of not uh, waiting and of not uh, choosing rightly. You know, if you must steal something, you have to do it secretly. And you may not even know if the thing is hot. How many of us have stolen from the pot of soup before? Aha. Uh -huh. God bless you. Don't do that again. God will help you. <laughs> and do you know that bringing that hot meat out of the uh, pot of soup, you will want to quickly swallow it. Is that not so? You don't want anybody to see that you are eating. You do it secretly. Because of that, you may bite your tongue, you may even burn your tongue. You may have to burn your lips as well. That is how stolen water is. You injure yourself while doing it. To you, it looks as enjoyment. But the damage or the damages incurred, after all, cannot be counted. One, you may have to 
suffer some psychological disturbance for life. Some people don't even have to enjoy their marriage later in life, when they eventually get married. Then you may even develop some diseases and illnesses. There is one problem in the northern states. Those who are in the medical line or whatever, they will, I don't know, they call it a fistibula or something. I don't know how they mention it. That is when the uh, area where the baby, your baby, when you want to give birth, will have to rest its head and push out. That place may be torn. And when it tears, it may tear along with the passage of your urine, where your urine passes through. So we have them, they will be smelling. There are many in the north. Small girls, they will be smelling. Even some boys, they may develop some diseases and illnesses. The thing you want to steal, you don't know if it is hot or cold. So maybe you stole from somebody with gonorrhea. So you have to develop some problems. Then, apart from that, you will have to carry some guilt and condemnation because you have heard before, you are hearing again today. That, condemna that condemnation will be there for life. You, you will not be able to forgive yourself. Even when God says he has forgiven you, you are still carrying around the guilt. Then, apart from that, you will have an unfulfilled Christian life. Your Christian life will not be fulfilled. You will look empty. You will feel empty. You will, you, you will, you will be looking for help. Then, your energy is lost. You know, we cannot read many Bible verses now. But the Bible says that the youths have one kind of energy. The energy of the youth will be lost because you have secretly sneaked or escaped into using the energy meant for the elderly people. So that energy is lost. I pray we will not be wasted in Jesus' name. Amen. Then the vision may be terminated. For somebody who had a vision of becoming somebody in life. As a man, a young man, you now become a young father. Suddenly. It may happen that way. Then there is shame and bitterness. What of hell? Because you have committed sin. Where do sinners go? Hello? Where do sinners go? Everybody should be able to answer that. Where do sinners go? Hellfire. You will not go there in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me jump from that place and then talk quickly on... There is now a problem. Is that not so? We should look for a solution. How do you manage your hormonal changes that mommy mentioned? How do you manage the prayer from outside, from your friends, to push you or draw you into such, like dinner was drawn into by the maidens of the land? You know, anybody who gives his life to Jesus Christ and is not focused cannot make it in life. Number one thing you do is you be focused. If you say you are a child of God, and if you are yet to be one, please, before you leave this program, strive to be one. It's possible for you to be a child of God and be committed to him. So if you have not done that, give your life to Jesus before you leave this program. God will help you. Amen. So when you are a child of God, you must be focused. Focused on what? On the things of heaven. The book of Colossians says that we should focus, look 
forward unto things of heaven, not the things of this earth. God will help you. I say God will help you. Amen. Then there are some things that can stir up that feeling in you. That feeling, when they are stirred up, you may not be able to control them easily. That is why you should not watch pornographic uh, videos on your phones. Some of you, the moment you have the opportunity to undo a cell phone, what you go to do is to watch a film there or look at uh, what they post on YouTube. Instead of doing that, there are useful things you can do on the YouTube. So don't watch pornographic films. Don't look for nude pictures. Then, if you know that you are so much, because there are three categories of uh, people when you are, uh, what we can commonly call touch, touch feeling. Some people, before you touch them, they are sensitive to it. Some people, you have to use some things to trigger them into that. Some people, there is nothing you do until they make up their minds. Anyway, that is for the married people to learn from. But if you know that you are the type that when the opposite sex sits beside you and you will be having some strange feelings, why don't you avoid sitting beside such people? That does not mean you are... What is Okobo in English? <laughs> That does not mean you are weak as a man or as a woman. So, it's only teaching you that you should be careful. In fact, every child of God should be highly sensitive. Sensitive to spiritual matters, sensitive to uh, physical matters. Because the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of who? of God. Are you all here? Yes. I need your attention, please. Another important thing you must do is to always occupy yourself with profitable things. Occupy yourself. The devil looks for a, uh, an idle person to give his uh, terrible assignment to. Avoid his assignments. Then, you know, um, it should be at your age that you will need to learn some traits, learn some uh, vocational skills. In fact, to be gainfully employed, there are so many steps. In fact, part of it is for you to occupy yourself and learn some skills, learn some... Um, um, and some certificates, have some certifications, you know, and so on. You can keep yourself busy with several things that are useful and can assist you. Another important thing you can do is to love praying. Somebody who likes to pray always, who wants to pray against his weaknesses, you will want to pray against your weaknesses. You will not just want to sit down like that. Even while sitting down in your mind, what are you doing? Praying. praying. You still have several steps to cover in life. And it's your turn now. I cannot not come and struggle to do what your age will do now. I can do some. Manage to do some. Try to do some, but this is your own time. It is your turn. So do it now at your own time. God will help you. Amen. Why don't you dissociate from bad friends, 
friends that will influence you, lure you into ungodly um, things. I want to my software Jassy. Leave them alone. Those people uh, your your friends see as a I want to mother, come everything. That do that know everything. You know, it's better for you to be a novice in those things than for you to be a victim of those things. They are clever in their own way. They know how to sneak and go around about it. Eh? But for you, who, who, who doesn't know how to do it? They are pushing you into doing it. So you should be very careful. Leave them alone. Make friends with children of God. You may need to ask for the grace. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, you need that grace. Go and read that at home. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Then, and you have to abstain. To abstain, you must determine. You need to determine. That, no, I want to abstain. And if you are able to abstain, do you know you will be lucky in life? You will be lucky in life. Even married people are still abstaining so that they can be very useful for God. What about you that is yet to be married? Try and abstain. Abstain by all means. Then, you know one important thing. You need to have a testimony. You know, you need to have a testimony. The testimony that you can share openly with anybody. Some people cannot say that, uh -uh, I know that I served God in holiness, in purity, in this, in that. What is your own testimony? And this is your time, oh. Our local Abbey. It's your turn. So this is your time. You must gainfully use it and enjoy your youthful age. You know, when you get to my age now, what kind of experiences do you want to share with other people? Yesterday, myself and mommy, we were sharing some uh, experiences. And I said, I concluded and said, I said, mommy, do you know that we were, we only escaped those things by the grace of God? Because you have opportunities around you these days. While I was going to get married, I did not do any tests to know my genotype or do... If it will be undefiled, then you have to carry out all these things. You can even create standard for yourself. You create standard for yourself. Tell yourself that, uh -huh, after this one, I want to be this, I want to be that, and then, if God helps me, I will be this, I will be that. Create standard and have vision. Work towards that standard. Eh? Some of our youth that, have your, your, that, that, that are now, they are still youth, but are married now, and they are enjoying their homes. They created that standard. Eh? Even when you advise them, go and marry now, you are getting old. They tell you that, no, I still need to do this, and do that. Some, if, if you just, if you are not determined, if you are not uh, focused, if you don't create standard for yourself, you will just discover that you will not be able to feed yourself in life the way the, the whole world is turning to now. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Then, go and look for somebody that is physical, that can be your mentor. Especially not in the church Facebook. of God, not on Facebook. We said it yesterday. Yes, we mentioned it yesterday too. You know, you don't need to have friends only on Facebook. Some of you, the best advice you will receive is from Facebook. That is not good enough. You should be able to ask questions. Look at families if you, are, if you need answers towards uh, issues of marriage. Look at families you can be proud of. Call on the daddy there. Ask questions. They are ready to answer you. 
ask from your pastor. Your pastors are always ready, but you will not tell them. You will only tell them one out of 1,000 things that you have in your mind. And when you roll into 100 problems, you will rush back to the pastor. Some of the 100 problems may not have solutions again. It may be too late. Why don't you ask questions now when you can get uh, answers to them? God will help you. Amen. I think I have to pause for some time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think we will soon have to... What time? Okay. Maybe I should quickly tell us this, then we'll ask our questions. I said importance of abstinence uh, of sex before marriage. Uh, number one thing I put down here is emotional intimacy. If you have, let, let's even assume you have gotten the person, you know the brother now, you know you are already preparing, and maybe your body is now saying, let's just do this, let's do it, and you try as much as possible to overcome. So I say such a thing will bring more intimacy when you get married. Because, assuming you just fall sheep and you allow the brother to have you, you know what happened when Amnon had Tama? Immediately he just called for the security people. He first of all sent her out. She refused to go. He was trying to explain eh, this thing that happened, eh, this and that. Eh, Amnon just called the security guards to bond her out of his room. And she rent her beautiful clothes and pour ashes on her body. So, but you know, if you wait, even your husband will respect you, your wife will respect you, then you will become bonded together more than when you are falling into such things before marriage. Then it also reduces crisis and conflicts. You know, when the prayer call, and you try as much as possible to overcome it, you know, you know you have gone through certain things in that process. So by the time you get married, you have overcome an ordeal, and it is possible that helps you to have a smoother uh, transition to marriage or a smoother marriage relationship. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So because of our time, maybe we are stopping here and give room for questions. Maybe in the course of questions and answers, maybe we will have to tackle more of the things we have to tackle. Hallelujah. Please, can we jam our hands together for our mommies? Jam your hands together. If you've learned one thing or two, please jam your hands together. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. All right. I want to believe that we've learned one thing or the other. And uh, right now, we are going into question and answers because things like this, I know that there are things that we have experienced or that may be bothering us even before now, before this program. Uh, not, it might not be something that, it might be relating to what our mommy have said from what they have said or uh, your experiences towards the same topic. So we may not be able to entertain all questions because we have limited time, but I want to believe that we have questions. So if you have questions, please, I want you to signify so that we, I can call you out to ask your question. And I also believe our mothers are married counselors. They are, they are counselors for youths and teenagers, are touching all these uh, uh, all related issues that we can even meet them afterwards to ask questions. But right now, can we have two, three, four, five people that ask questions? And uh, I know some people might want to uh, write their question. Yes. Yes, you, are, you, you are shy to talk. Ah, okay, so maybe you write it down and just signify. I will read it out. Please, we have limited time. I want us to do that as quick as possible. But anybody that you are bold enough to ask your question, please, can you signify by raising your hands? I want to believe we learned so much from what our mommy has said. And I know there are some things that have been bothering our mind. And I said even before now. 
Okay, I want to say if you don't have questions, they will ask you questions. All right, but I'm giving you privilege of just a minute. <laughs> Before I want me to ask you a question, let me, let me give us the privilege of a minute. Or are, are we processing the question? You are processing the question. Okay, so as I want me to be asking the question, I will, go, I, I will go around now. If you have your question written down, just give it to me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to ask this question. In your school, maybe on campus, maybe you are in the higher institution or you are in the secondary school, even in the primary school, as a young Christian, you have a young boy or a young girl running after you, disturbing you, always giving you gifts, asking you to be his or uh, what will you do? If you go, if you are, while you are going to the library, he is there. And he will always tell you how beautiful you are, how handsome you are. There is no dress you wear. He will come and admire it. What do you do? Who has the answer for that? As a child of God, what do you do? Okay, mommy, what will you do? Praise the Lord. I will expect one of us, at least somebody, to raise up his or her hand. And, because this is what you face. I've seen people that are facing such things and have run to me. I've come. Sometimes it, it might be the lecturers. Sometimes it can even be the classmates. I've even seen a class teacher that told me that when the boy was not going to accept the proposal of the girl. The girl was like going to fail her exam. Uh-huh. Yes. So if you are a child of God in such, such situation, the first thing is that if you are a child of God, I expect you to be prayerful. So you need to pray. They don't battle it alone. Go to Christian counselor. They don't even give the person any chance. Is that taken? Yes. I used to hear of. Uh, I was going to give an example when you were talking, mommy. I will say that. Uh -huh. I will give that example. Then I want to give this other example. There are two things I want to say now. There is this brother. He's a popular pastor on campus. He's a popular Christian. If I is the joint campus fellowship coordinator, and the people are saying, ah, this brother, he, he like girls, so you know me, I'm not exposed to that, so I don't know. I can't say about it, but I respect him because he's our joint campus coordinator. So one day I just saw him; he was carrying bag, and now help him to carry the bag. I was now following him. So when we now got to a place where you know, it looks like a quiet place, ah, he just says, sister, ah, ah, eh, come ah. you know, they have told me some things about him. When I gave him his bag, I don't know till tomorrow, maybe we, I don't know, maybe we have met and I greeted him. I, me, Obano, do, but for that reason, that, for, from that day, I'm no longer close to him. I, I don't even have time to talk to him again. So if you have such experience, run to counselors, run to your pastors, pray, and make sure you are not, anytime the person comes, because the Bible says the, the children of darkness, they are so wise in their own generation. You don't know what they are planning. You don't know the strategies and tactics they will try to use for you, because you have a simple heart. God will help us in Jesus' name. So when our mommy was talking, I remember a story that happened. It was when the girl, when she was impregnated, that the mother now brought her to our church because she's ashamed, she was ashamed to take her to their own church. It's a child of children of God. Like some of us, we are not born again. You are just children of children of God. You yourself, you are not a child of God. 
And it is very important that you are a child of God. Yes. You should know God personally. Not because your parents are Christians. So this girl, they have a neighbor. That girl, in Yeti, da. So she is very close to that girl. And she would, the Yeti teacher will be following her to the house of the parent. And they cannot do anything about it until she was impregnated. Do you know that shortly after that, this other girl, Totija, now gave her life to Jesus. This one was impregnated and have a child after well, outside well look. So that is why you have to be careful. Yes. If you are after one, you are after one. Brothers will not, in fact, it will take them serious <laughs> counseling from pastors before they can accept to marry you. So God will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, mommy. Do you know why I asked that question? I experienced it in the secondary school. I experienced it in the university. In fact, that lecturer was my lecturer. Not from my faculty. It was just the course you do outside the faculty. And I was like telling God, but I prayed before choosing that by the grace of God, I was very young when I gave my life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it was the very year I gained admission into the university that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Lucky me. I was very lucky. You know, and that lecture, I do not know what I did. First, I rushed to our com campus coordinator. I told him, this is what I experienced, though. It was like joke, like joke, yo. Now, he will make sure he, he, he will seize my own book and ask me to come to his office. It's like this thing is serious, so That coordinator told me that the next, I should not be afraid, that I should be very bold. He said, do you want such a thing? I said, no. He said, ask him, what do you want from me. That is one question some of us are not bold to ask. Ask him. Even when my husband was proposing to me, I still asked him that same question. What is it that you want from me? Say it in clear statements. Let me know. Let me know. What is it that you want from me? If it is only children, any woman can give any man children. Do you understand where I'm talking from? Be bold and be specific. So I, uh, he told me to ask him that question. Then when I came to the Bible study, I told the residential pastor then as well. He prayed for me. He said God did not tell him that I would terminate my uh, university academic um, uh, unexpectedly. He prayed for me. Do you know who I told again? I told my mother. Do you talk to your mother to that extent? I told my mother. And of blessed memory, she will always encourage, cancel, stand by one. She said, don't worry, I am behind you. You know one prayer that my mother was praying for that man? And sometimes I will hear her praying that prayer. She said, I don't know it. Just remove him from the path of this girl. Do you know what happened? It wasn't that lecturer that completed that course for us. I don't know how it happened. We did not see him for some time on that campus. Later, he came back. When I asked him that question, I said, what do you want from me? He said, ah, ah, I'm looking for a wife, and I know that I can only get a good wife from SU. Do you know I was bold enough to ask him again? I said, why are you not SU if you want to marry SU? Then he said, <laughs> Then I said, sorry, Sal. Said, have I asked you to leave? I said, I have to go. 
He said, come and sit down here. I said, uh-uh, I'm not sitting down. It's not by force. Thank you, sir. Good night. And I left him. Can you be as bold as that? He was not the one that completed that course for us. That is because several people joined me in what? Prayer. prayer. There is efficacy in that power of prayer. You don't know. So you don't need to seal your mouth or suffer alone, just as mommy warned. You don't need to suffer alone. Tell people that can help you out. I want to also ask a question, especially for the brothers. This one is brief. Is it sinful for a brother to have uh, to sleep and have? That's, I, I've forgotten the name now. I didn't write it. Yes, you see this charge when you wake up. Is it sinful? Are you a sinner? No. Yes. Are you sure? Maybe because you thought about it last night. Is that so? No. Because of what mommy said, your hormonal changes can just happen at any time. Do you know that it is not even all sweating like I am sweating now that is because of it, ordinary it. It could be as a result of some hormonal changes happening in the body. We cannot rule out those things. But when you wake up, clean yourself and confess it. Claim the word of God that I am a child of who? Of God. And remain a child of God. God will help you. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, Ma. I have just two questions with me. The first one says, Good afternoon, Ma. Ma, if a girl has a boyfriend and we advise her and she did not answer, and after that we have prayed for her, Ma, what should we do to it? Should I take it again? Or? If, the person, if, the person if, if, if a girl has a boyfriend, and we advised her, and she did not answer. And after that, we have prayed for her. What should we do to it? That means the girl is not a child of God. That is it. So we keep praying for her. And you take every effort, anything you can do that is within your capacity to keep encouraging her, to maybe to come to church, preach to her, pray for her, invite her for program, or you take her to leaders or... People that can help us spiritually. Is that or or yes. don't I get the question? I think you got it, ma. Or maybe the person is trying to advise another lady. Person. Yes. Maybe the, the other person has a boyfriend. I are trying to like maybe talk to her about it. And that person maybe you know this. Is that yeah, man? Yeah, of course. And uh, you prayed for that person, and there's no changes. Then what can you do? You keep praying for her. You should first. Help her uh, to preach, uh, preach to her. Some people don't know the value of. Uh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Some people don't even give themselves respect. Hello, me, girlfriend, respect. So, because such people, until they are born again, can they know the will of God concerning such matters? So, you first, your first assignment is not just to pray ordinary prayer. Pray along with Jacob's boyfriend, the sile. No. The prayer is that God should save her soul. When she becomes born again, she would desire to know the will of God concerning her life. 
All right, thank you, mommy. And uh, I think it is a similar question, but I think the answer can be from another approach. This one, the second question. All right, I said, if a person is having a friend that is very corrupt, and you, as a child of God, you are trying to avoid such a person, and the person is coming to you always, even if you are trying not to talk to such friend, because he or she may entice you and detach you from... Okay, I say, how, what can you do as a child of God to detach from that person? Praise the Lord. There are people like that. There are some people, even if they are not Christian, they can decide and be determined. But there are some people, even when they are still Christian, they can still know they are weak. But if you are such a person, you know that if this person comes around, it will always influence you. Try as much as possible to keep a gap between you and the person. Then like mommy has said the other time, let's first of all take that person to the cross. If the person is born again, he cannot be luring you to do evil. Bring the person to church. Invite the person to program. Pray for the person. You can take the person, take the matter to somebody that is older than the two of you, especially a pastor or a leader, so that they can cancel both of you. Then she, he or she can be led to Christ. Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. You know, second, um, is it First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two says this. It's one of our memory verses. Abstain from all appearances of evil. It's you who will abstain. The, the, the evil will want to follow you. It's you that will run away. Flee. You run. So if that person, what I will tell that person, since you have chosen that path and I've been telling you to follow the better way, I don't. I will say it. That's one thing about me. Maybe that's why I don't have so many friends. I will be blunt. Even at my place of work, they know me for that. I will tell you bluntly. You may not like me, but at least everyone we have to give account of his or our own soul. Oh my! It's you that will stand before the judgment uh, throne. So, so that's why I have to be myself. That's why I, I don't want to be another person's idea. So if you are not ready to, to come to my faith, we cannot be friends. I will tell you bluntly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, mommy. Please, let me just add this one question. I can still, I still have that time. Just this, I, I want to believe there is a future question I, for me personally. All right, so, ma, can a married man tell his wife about everything, especially in monthly salary? Yes. That is how it should be. And you see, God will help your generation. This generation has a lot of problems. Oh, challenges, not problems. Because problems don't always have uh, easy solutions. But I believe challenges can be surmounted. I, if you don't tell your spouse everything about you, you are putting yourself in a sharp uh, trap. Oh, because... He, he, knows, he knows you come home with uh, 20,000 all the time, all the time. Or she knows you come with 20,000 all the time. Give her 20,000. Give her 20,000. A day will come that she will need another 20,000 before you bring the usual one. And if you don't allow him or her to know that from the source, everything is 25. So that's why I gave you 20. She will, if you are a man, eh? my brother, as a man, if you don't allow your wife 
to know everything about you, you are in trouble. Because there is no amount of money you give a woman that is enough. Oh. Koto, koto no ni. She will come back from the market and tell you that I will be mi manra mama pa luja. If you are from Milo, work mama ni ko. Do you understand? Then, oh, safe gone. You are not safe because one day you will just see. Allah oni ja kong ba ya wo walo. You will just see somebody who has enough money to snatch away the woman. And the woman will follow <laughs> So before you know it, your wife is gone. So you see, the Bible says the two of them are naked. That they nakedness does not mean that they are walking about nakedly. No. It's only signifying that there is no secret between them. Even your past, share it with him. Something happened one day to me. I will be very brief. The school that I went to, it's a very big school, well-known, popular, and they like doing show. You know what I mean, show. So, because they will always want to show off, show off, show off. I had some classmates, mixed school that time, boys and girls. I had some classmates, and we were about doing, they, they wanted to connect with me because we were about to celebrate 40 years of leaving that school. So they wanted to connect with me, and one day, I was in the sitting room, and one of the boys called me. We had group Pedro that we were communicating. Just called me like that. I sat on the same seat with my husband in the sitting room. We were just relaxing. This phone rang. I saw true color something. I saw that I met Milele now. Okay. I put it in the loud speaker because I know them. Some of them don't have homes again. Some of them are in trouble concerning all these things we are talking about. And they don't mind hanging out with any uh, two careless. So he said, Ah, how are you? And when he said, If you know my husband, my husband, his, his chemistry will be telling him something. He's not the type that will take all those nonsense. He sat up. <laughs> then, do you know, if I could not manage that very well, it could lead to a problem. Another time, a woman, I want to man toro, woke up to the and you don't know what this man said. He said, I said, who are you looking? He said, Daddy. I said, which daddy? He said, Daddy. I said, what for? Is he expecting you? Yeah, he said, uh-uh. Just tell him that he uh, she mentioned the name. Uh, I can't remember the name. He said, is here. Uh-uh. I said, what, what do you want from me? He said, just tell him. Uh, when I brought out my husband, I said, you are the one who having visitor. This woman said, yeah, if I tell you, yeah, so, 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 that you will understand. He came out, he said, uh-uh. He said, do I know, know you from anywhere? Do I know you? He said, eh, I'm on you, no, no. What is sick? What is she? Uh, then he said, where is the father? You know my husband, if you know him. He allowed her to break everything into pieces in my presence. That is the nakedness. To show that you, to any length, you must prove to your spouse that you are not hiding anything. Even if you had been in sin before, tell your spouse, to Roger to marry Kanino Amon. Oh, my ye won ni ba ye. Take on John Jadebai at the Padek on no one. 
the woman should be able to calculate immediately and say that, oh, Ara, I want a teacher. Then if there should be any embarrassment, the person that should be embarrassed is one who wants to break your home. Do you understand what I'm saying? God will help us. Please, let me just uh, add something about that finances. Some of us, we are selfish. Sisters, you keep your money. Owo, owo oko, ajono. Owo yawo, adano. It's a sin, yo. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can we jam our hands together for our mommies? They've really imparted us today. All right, so our mommy wants to pray with us. Can we rise up together as they pray with us? Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. Almighty God, we want to thank you especially for this program. We worship you for the grace granted unto us to be participants. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we have shared with these young ones, that you will help them to be obedient in Jesus' name. Most of the problem believers have today is disobedience. It's not that they don't know. Because our conscience will also tell us the truth. Father, we pray against the spirit of disobedience of the last days in the lives of these young ones in Jesus' name. All these things we have taught them. We pray that you help them to put into practice when it is time. Father, grant unto them in Jesus' name. The ones they should do now, help them to be able to do it successfully in Jesus' name. I pray for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, that you will not regret everything you have heard today in Jesus' name. I pray you will make it in life in Jesus' name. I pray you will be great ministers of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you will not miss it out where you should get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for you have heard us. As the program is continued, bless us the more in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. If you have a program with two, please. What do we have next? Talk, right? And what's the topic? Youth. The pillar of church. All right. Uh, please, that means some of us, you don't have your program booklet with you. So, and if you don't have your program booklet with you, can you kindly just go out, register your presence that you are in this program. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Can we jam our hands together as we welcome our Father in the Lord, the National Program Director of Christian Faith and Fellowship Mission, Pastor Kumuyi Olubumi, giving us this talk this afternoon. You're welcome, Daddy. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we want to appreciate you. We want to bless you because you are our maker. Tenly because you have chosen us as pillars in your church. Father, we thank you for this real privilege. We say, Daddy, be exalted in the name of Jesus. 
As we are moving to this teaching, this talk, we pray, Father, talk to us, bless us, open our understanding, and help us to pay attention to every details of this talk. Thank you, Father, because you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Who can tell me what we want to deliberate on? Who can tell me the focus of our deliberation? What are we having now? Again, I hope I'm talking to youths, those who can speak louder. Youths, the pillar of church growth. We are not preaching now. I'm invited to give a talk. And so I want you to pay attention to what we'll be deliberating on. Youth, the pillar of what? Who can tell me the name of our denomination? Do you know the name of this denomination? Yes, can we chorus it? Again. And I take my test from Psalm chapter 127. Let us open our Bible to Psalm chapter 127. Verses 3 to 5. Lo, children and are an heritage of the Lord. Fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that art is quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Let us open our Bible to Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 29. The glory of the young men is their strength, and the beauty of the old men is the gray Amen. We are looking at the youth, the pillar of church growth. When we talk about pillar, we all understand what it means. In this auditorium where we are sitting down, when you look around, you can see pillars holding or supporting the structure in which we are seated. That shows without this pillar. Please, can you point to the pillars? Pillars. All these posts are pillars. Are you hearing me? They are called what? They are pillars. They hold and support the structure. So without this pillar, what do you think can happen to this building? Eh? It will collapse. That shows pillar in the building is very, very what? Important. It is not only this post you are seeing as pillar, there are some inside the wall. Are you hearing me? <laughs> we have pillars inside that hold the structure. That is what we call pillar. So when you talk about pillar, is a tall 
upright structure used as a support, support for building. As I said, what supports our building is known as what? As a pillar. And in this talk, we are going to do justice to it by examining we have objectives that we want to, that we guide us in the course of our discussion. What are the objectives? Number one, this talk will help us to discover our strengths and how you, we, we will use our strength for the advantage of the kingdom and the church. That is number one objective we are going to walk towards. Two, this talk will give us an awareness of the youth, the availability of opportunity that you can attain to help the church grow and make profitable achievements. Another goal or objective of this talk is to point you to the areas of service that are available in the church where you can invest your strength, resources, and potentials to bring benefits to the church and to the kingdom of God. Another objective of this teaching or this talk is to teach you the importance of good character formation in the delivery of your service to the church. And lastly, this teaching will help you to gain foresight into the vision and mission of the church. And you will be willing to key in and partner with them to bring fulfillment into the church. These are the things we are going to do justice to as we embark on this talk. When you talk about youth, we all understand what it means. There are peculiarities, there are facts that scriptures had opened our eyes to know about youth. Number one, youth are known for their strength. Say, I'm known for my strength. So youth are always full of strength, as we read in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. Youth, they have energy, they have passion, and they have innovation to leadership. And fourthly, they are creative. So, as youth, you have strength, you have ability to carry out a given task. And also, you are always passionate. And that is why we see youth, they, are always, they have drive, they have inner drive that pushes them to achieve. Another thing about youth, which I want you to understand, that the best time for you as youth is now to bear your yoke. There is time for everything. There is a time when you will not be able to do anything. In book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 27, it says it is good for a youth to bear his yoke in the day of his youth. To bear your yoke in the day of your youth, what does it mean? Number one, it means to be under a government. Two, to be in service. Three, to serve humanity. The best time whereby you can serve, the best time whereby you can learn, the best time whereby you can utilize your potentials is your youthful stage. Another fact that I want you to understand as youth is that your generation is awaiting your manifestation. Say, my generation is awaiting my manifestation. The world at large is waiting, seeking for your manifestation. And so there is need for you to put in your input. There is need for you to do your best because this is the best time for you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19, he says the earnest expectation of what? 
Eh? Is awaiting what? Eh? The manifestation of the what? Sons of sons of God. The world is waiting for your manifestation. The church is waiting for your manifestation. And I'm praying you will not disappoint the church in Jesus' name. Another fact you must understand as you that you are a vital component of the church. A church without youth is a dead church. There was a pastor, I was listening to his message. He's a general, a prominent minister of God in Nigeria. Listen to me very well to know that you have a role to play. He said he was invited to USA to preach. And the woman of God that invited him to USA for ministration, when they then got, he got to USA, this woman of God now said, Pastor, you will follow me to a place. I want, you to, I want you to know, I want to teach you a lesson. So when you go back to Nigeria, you will know how to grow your church. This man of God, this, this prominent pastor in Nigeria, did not know what this woman intended doing. And the man of God followed this woman of God. By the time they got to, the, a, got to a place, they saw a big church, but it was locked. A big church. But nobody was inside. And this pastor was now asking the woman, what happened to this church? Why is this church look dehabilitated? Look old? Logged? What happened? And the woman kept silent. And by the time she will answer, she said, this is the church where I grew. But today, nobody is in the church. The church is locked down. And this man asked the question, why? Why is it locked down? And she said, because when we were growing the church, we were doing fine as youths. The moment we went away, we started traveling, we went for one program or the other, there was no other person who could take over the youthful activities, activities in the church. And by the time the leaders, the elders in the church, died, also the church died. Our church will not die. This church will not die. So, youth are vital components of the church. Without you, the church has no future. Are you getting it? Hello? Am I talking? Without you, there is no future for the what? For the church. So, you need to be thinking be looking at yourself that you are important. The future of the church is not in the building or structure, but it is in the, in the capacity that you have to attract and maintain people in the church. And I'm praying, this is your turn. You will not disappoint God. I said you will not disappoint God. Don't forget we are talking about Youth, the pillar of church growth. Youth are the caretakers of the physical asset church. Are you hearing me? You all know the meaning of a caretaker. Have you heard of a caretaker before? A person in charge. Is that not so? So, you are the caretaker of church assets. So, God has brought you to the church to be the caretaker of the church, to be in, in charge of church assets, both spiritually and physically. When you talk about spiritual assets, we are talking about the church belief system. We are talking about the inheritance of our father that has been given to us. They are, it, they, it is our assets. We are meant to protect it. We are meant to preserve it. We are meant to take over and to care for it. And I'm praying the Lord will help us. Youth are also caregiver. What do I call you? We are caregivers to our society. 
our society is highly depending on the youth. Especially, God is depending on the youth. So you must bring fresh and progressive ideas to the church. And I'm praying that God will open your eyes. I said God will open your eyes. So you'll be able to see yourself as an important person. And you'll be able to work on yourself. In doing justice to the objectives that are before us, we are going to look at this talk. We are going to center on four points. Number one, your strength as a youth. How do I know my strengths? And how do I develop my strengths? Two, opportunities available for you in the church. There are opportunities as pillars in the church, as youth in the church. There are several opportunities available for you. Three, we are also going to look at the vision and the mission of Christian faith and fellowship mission. There is need for you as a youth to know the vision and the mission that will help you to align with the goal of the mission. Thereby, church will become a productive organization. And lastly, we are going to examine how to form a godly character. That is formation of a godly... Are youth weak? Are youth weak? Who are they? Eh? They are what? Who are you? Answer me. Who are you? Say, I am strong. I am strong. Say it louder. I am strong. If you are following, praise the Lord. Nobody is created empty. Do you believe that? You are not created empty. When God created you, he put some things inside of you. He put potentials. Your strength could be your gifts. It could be potentials inside of you. It could be what you know how to do that others do not know how to do or what you can do better. Are you hearing me? Do you know each course we study in school is for the betterment of the church? You are a medical doctor. You read medicine. It's for the betterment of the church. You are a banker. You read accountancy. It's, it, 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 it's for the betterment of the church. Are you hearing me? All you are doing in the school, all the course of study you underwent in the school, they are for the benefit of the church. Your gifts, singing, creative arts, all these are the talents that God has given to you. God is expecting you to use this for the growth of the church. And you must be ready to contribute your areas of strength to the growth of the church. 
as I said, that everybody that is created is created with something. We are created for a purpose. Are you hearing me? Everybody is created for what? For a purpose. So, there is need for you to know the reason why you are created. Why am I in the church? You are in the church to give an answer, to solve problems. And I'm praying the Lord will help you to discover the answer you will give to the challenges of the church in the name of Jesus. There are several areas of service where you can invest your strength. Example, for example, you can invest your area of your strength in youth evangelism ministry, in music, ICT. Thank God for what God is using you to do. We are expecting more. Thank God for our brethren, our, our orchestras, our choir. When they come up, they sing. We are blessed. That also, are you not blessed? Uh -huh. So, these are the areas of service where God can help you to explore and use your own for the glory of God. We have interpretation in the church. These are the services you can render in the church. There is a department that we are looking for people who can be of help to help us. That is tracts and publication. Are you hearing me? That is content writing. Those of you who are good at writing, you know, content writers, you can write, and when you write, it will give inspiration. We need you. Church needs you. It's an area of service where you can use to build and to develop the church. As I said, content writing, drama, evangelical group, concerning and follow-up ministry. There are people in the church that can be a good vessel in counseling departments. We need youth who can be in the counseling units, who can be in the follow-up units. Are you hearing me? We should, not, we should not leave all these activities to our parents. We, young ones that are coming behind, we should be able to take responsibility. Prayer band and intercession ministry is there. In all our respective assemblies, if you do research, you will discover that our prayer band and intercession ministry are filled with adults. Is that not so? Old women. People who have been in ministry for about 40, 30 years. You know, as they are getting old and older, their strengths are reducing. We need younger ones in praying ministry, in intercessory ministry. These are the area of service where you can help the church to grow. What of praise team, hospital and healing ministry, ministry to schools. We start, we need people who will be moving from one school to another for evangelism. Children ministry. In our churches, we discover all these ministries I'm mentioning are occupied by our whole people. They are doing fine. Thank God for our, our leaders, our workers, our mamas and daddies. They are doing fine. But you know that they are listening for us to start preparing to take over so that by the time they are no more there, the ministry will not suffer. We have children ministry. We also have pastoral ministry. Many of us, we are shining away, running away from being a pastor. You say, ah, you want, how many of you will be a pastor? We say, ah, I can't be a pastor. Are you hearing me? How many of you want to be a pastor? I want to see your hand. God bless you. Yes. How many, how many sisters want to be a pastor, missus? Or pastor, miss? Yes. God bless you. Yes. Clap for Jesus. Don't say that I'm a youth. I cannot do it. I could remember vividly that by God's grace, I've been in pastoral ministry since my university days. Are you hearing me? <laughs> in my undergraduate days, I've been pastoring a, pastoring a church in my undergraduate days. So, 
Also, God can use you. You just have to surrender yourself to God. Are you hearing me? The grace of God is there. In the fivefold ministry, you know, we have fivefold ministry. We have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Youth can be can as well be useful in all this in this fivefold ministry. We need you. You just have to surrender yourself. Are you hearing me? How old was Jesus when he started? Do you want to become old before you start? Eh? How old was he? When Jesus started his ministry, he started when he was 30. But he started, he preached in the temple when he was 12 years old. So, don't say I'm still, I'm still young. Rehabonke started when he was a young boy. Are you hearing me? Eh? He started, I think he started, he, he, was, he was saved at age, age of 8 years. And he started as an evangelist, I think, age 13. It's the same Holy Spirit that I received, you have received. Say, I can do it. And the Lord will help you. I said, the Lord will help you. How do you discover your strengths? How do you discover the area of service? Many of us want to work for God. We want to be useful in one capacity or the other. But we don't know how to go about it. Number one, give yourself to prayers. What do I say? By the, start, by the time you start praying, God will lead you. God will talk to you as he talked to that young boy, uh, Samuel, a young boy. For the first time, he heard the voice of God. He had never heard God calling him. The first time God called him, he never knew that it was God who was calling him. He ran to his master, thinking that it was Eli that was calling him. But Eli said, go and sleep. Second time, he told him, go and sleep. It was the third time he knew that it was God that was calling him. And he said, whenever you hear the voice again, what will you do? Eh? Speak on. The servant's words. Hear it. As a young boy, he started and praying, you will not be a wasteful generation. So pray. Another way through which you can know the area of your strength is your gifts. Are you getting me? You know the area of your strength by your what? By the gift that you have. If you are eloquent, you are the type who an extrovert. Let me say an extrovert. A person who can talk very well. Are you getting me? A person who can converse. A person who can, when he talks, people get inspiration, you know. Instead of you turning yourself to comedian, Causing people to make you become a jester. You know, you can turn it, you can use that gift in the church of God, becoming a pastor. Are you getting me? Becoming a Sunday school teacher. Becoming an house caring fellowship teacher. Are you getting me? So, your gift, maybe you know how to sing. Don't bury that gift of singing. I'm a singer too. Are you hearing me? So, don't bury the gift of singing. Pursue it. Work on it. Go and join choir member. I'm still expecting a day when we'll be having about 500 orchestras in this church. Say amen. amen. You know the meaning of, of, of orchestras? Those who sing at the same time, they have their instruments. These are people we call orchestra. I'm still expecting a day. We are, our orchestra will be more than the whole congregation of this church. Do you think it is not possible? Let me cite this case, this example. There was a time when I started growing and I had a conviction that I should be playing clarinet. And I, in fact, I prayed and I saw it in my dream that you'll be playing clarinet. For the first time, I saw how clarinet was played in my dream. So when I woke up, I told my leader that I wanted to be playing clarinet, and I took it up. In those days in our church here, when you want, when you want to learn instrument, we surely go to apostolic faith. So we, I was taken to apostolic faith. 
for it for the teacher will be taking me. The teacher who, who wanted to teach me said, I don't think I can pick because as at that time I was a young boy, a young boy, and for you to play clarity, you know, in apostolic, apostolic faith, there are things there are things they will see in you that will not they, they, will make, they will let you know that you you will play violin, you, you will play clarinet, you will play this. And the man said, I don't think. The first time I could remember the first time I went there, the man drilled me. The whole, co the whole coordinator for Ondo and Ekiti, clarinetist. The man drilled me, and I said, Wow, I don't think I can go there. Since that day, I did not go there again. I was at home. I took my, uh, my tutor. I was having my tutor. I played without any, without any guide. I gave myself to it. That is what God is expecting us to do. Commitment. And I did it. Until a day I went to show, my, told, uh, show myself to my leader. I said, Mommy, this, I can, I, this is what I, I can do now. And she said, do it. I did it. She commended me. Thank God for my choir leader. She's a good mother. She's my mother indeed. She built me up. She encouraged me. Even when I wanted to be discouraged, Mommy will give you hope. Thank God for our life. So, by the time I did that, one day I just played the instrument and I said I wanted to play. And our daddy, late general, our late Gio, Daddy Romolade said, when do you start playing this? Go and sit down. And I said, Daddy, I can play. He invited me to his office. He brought a book, an in-book. He tested me. He gave me an exam and I passed the exam. That was how I became certified. In that instrument. What am I saying? Your gift makes room for you. Are you hearing me? There is nothing you do. You know how to do. Don't say it is small. Do it very well. Are you hearing me? If it is singing, you know how to do. Sing very well. If it is praise, praise worship, you know how to do. Do it very well in your local church. Go and assist your pastor. Don't leave your pastor to it. Most of you don't come to weekly programs. We only see you on Sunday service, on Bible study. We don't see you in the church. Am I not correct? Uh, you are not answering me. We don't see you. Go and help your pastor. Another way to discover your strength is by reading Christian literatures. Are you hearing me? The more you read, the more you discover whom you are. Many of you don't read. You are lazy. And... You see, a reader is always a leader. Are you hearing me? A reader is, is always what? A leader. So, learn always to read good Christian literatures that can help you to build you up. And I pray God will help you in Jesus' name. How do you invest in your strengths? How do we invest in our strength? Number one is availability. What do I call it? You make yourself available. It is when you make yourself available that the grace of God will be multiplied upon you. There is nothing you know how to do. When you don't make yourself available, you will not be better. You will not be, you will not be, you will not be good in that area. So, number one is availability. Always make yourself available for the work of God. Two, admiration. I call it admiration. That is, cherish whatever God has given to you. There is need for you to always cherish what God has given to you. Remember this, the parable of a man who was traveling in the Bible and he gave gifts, he gave talent. You may call it talent. If it were to be our day, we can say money because Jesus is the best asset manager. So when he was traveling, the man gave talent. We can say money or assets. Are you hearing me? Because when you talk about talent, it could be it could be what? It could be an asset. So he was traveling. He gave his servants how many? The first one, five. Second one, two. Third one, one. The one that took five went to use it. And by the time he came, he made gain how many profits? 100 percent. Is that not so? 100 percent profit. That is another five. Another one who uses two also got another 100% profit. But the one that took one, what did he do? He went to hide it. He was comparing himself. 
Ah, how, 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 you would have given me five. You would have given me two. You know, there is nothing that God gives to you that is not worthwhile. Anything God gives you is what? Is what? Why? You need to cherish it. There is no gift that God has given to you that is small. It all depends about how you handle it. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Are you hearing me? <laughs> so, you need to cherish whatever you are given by God. If God, give, if God gives you the grace to teach, cherish it. If God gives you the grace to be a pastor, cherish it. If God gives you the grace to be an evangelist, cherish it. And lastly, addition of information. There is need for you to seek for improvement in the area of your gifting. There is need for you to seek for what? Improvement. Don't just sit there. Nobody wants to move with mediocre. Are you getting me? You just need, you need to improve on whatever you are given. If you are a choir, you know how to sing. Go and work on yourself. Don't just depend on choir practice alone. Listen to music. Music, listen to songs sung by other people. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? <laughs> so you seek for improvement in the area of your gifting. And I'm praying that God will help us in Jesus' name. Now we are going to the second part. Opportunities available for you in the church. I want to encourage you as from now to see this church as your alma mater. To see this church as your father's house. To see this church as your home. Because see your church, Christian Faith and Fellowship Mission, as a platform to utilize your gifts and your potentials. Are you getting me? Nobody is chasing you away. Our leaders love you. Do they not love you? Answer me. They do. They love us. So, see this church as a platform whereby you can grow yourself. Don't say, I, I'm having a ministry. I'm having a ministry. Everybody has ministry. Are you hearing me? Everybody what? But that you are having ministry does, does not send you away from the church. Whatever the ministry you are having, come and use it in the church. For the growth of the church. To build the church. Are you hearing me? I'm praying God will help us in Jesus' name. Because our church is really, is ready to give you support in fulfilling your dreams. There is no, there is no gift you have that church will not support you to utilize. Are you hearing me? So you are free to use your gift. Go back to your local assembly. Go back to your campuses and support your associate coordinator. Support your campus leaders. Support your pastor. Build this church. Let's build together. And I'm praying God will help us in Jesus' name. In supporting our church, there is need for us to know what we stand for. Because when the, when the need, the, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is what? Is inevitable. So there is need for you to understand the vision of the church and the mission of the church. If I ask most of us now, we don't know the mission and the vision of our church. Can anybody tell me the vision of our church? Do you all know the vision of our church? <laughs> so, the, the vision of the church you don't know. How do you submit? How do you put in your best to such a church? So, there is need for you to know the vision of the church. When you talk about the vision, we are talking about the mental image of our church. Are you getting me? Number one vision of our church is to get heaven for everlasting rest. That is number one vision that we have in this church. Two, to live Christian life of purity and holiness. That's another vision that our church has. Now our mission, what is the mission? It's talking, when you talk about our mission, what does it mean? It's talking about the purpose. Why our leaders establish this church. Are you hearing me? Why do they, why did they create, why did they found the church? Number one, to carry the gospel message of Christ Jesus to the world. Can you see? Repent and believe what? Eh? Repent and what? That is our motto. That is the motto of the church. 
repent and what? Believe. Repent and believe what? The gospel. That is the motto. So, number one mission of our church is what? Is to carry the gospel of message of Jesus Christ to the people. He's talking about, about evangelism. So, there is need for you to share in the vision. There is need for you to carry the vision. Are you hearing me? So, you must be an evangelist. A person who goes here and there spreading the gospel. Another mission of the church is to let those who are born again systematically learn the message of Christ's gospel and, let, and live by it. That is talking about equipping and discipleship. You should know what we stand for. We stand for what? Evangelism, conversion of sinners to Christ. And having done that, we, we what? We disciple them. Are you hearing me? So you should help your pastor. You should join your leaders. Work hand in hand with them. To do this, I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Another mission is that through the word of Christ, which is the true doctrine, impact the life of others around us. That us, another thing we stand for is what? That we might have the understanding and believe in what? In the total, complete Bible doctrine. What do I call it? Eh? Total what? Bible what? Doctrine. We believe in the Bible. The basic Bible doctrine that can help us, that can qualify us to make heaven. These are the mission of our church. Also, to plant churches, we are members we meet to fellowship. And then the true word of God is talking about church planting. So you should, you should carry the vision. You should share in the vision. Are you getting me? So when your leaders are saying, let's go for evangelism, don't run away. I discover when we say we want to go for evangelism, you will be giving excuse. Pastor, I'm having a headache. Pastor, I'm this, I'm that. It's because you've not yet gotten the vision of the church. You've not yet gotten the mission of the church. Are you hearing me? So the mission of the church is what? Church planting. And lastly, is to intensify evangelism. Both in Nigeria, Africa, and all the nations of the world. He's talking about the mission outreach. Very soon, our church will reach out. Beyond Nigeria. Beyond Africa. Very soon, our church will go to Europe countries. Asia countries. You are not saying amen. Who is, God, who, who, who is the person that God will use? Who will, who, will, who will be the one that God will use? Ah, I, I don't see hands. The Lord will use you all. So that is the mission of the church. As we must have it in mind. As you are traveling out, as God is opening the door of opportunity for you to travel out, have it in mind that I'm going to establish Christian faith and fellowship mission. The Lord will help us. So, we are to build the church world together. We are to build the church together. And I'm praying that God will help us in Jesus' name. And we are going to the last part. That is talking about godly character. You know, I've stated the objectives of this, of this talk. That we, may post, that we might possess the character of Christ. One thing is missing. In the body of Christ among you these days is the character of Christ. You know, all I've said about service to God is charisma. But another thing that is very important is what? Is character of Christ. When you talk about formation of godly character, we are talking about you becoming like Jesus. You having close relationship with Jesus. I want to tell you, anybody that is not born again has no record with God. So, there is need for you to be what? To be born again. You know, people will say, we, we talk too much on born again in this church. Don't you have another message? Everything is born again, born again, born again. Yes, you must be what? You must be born again. Because without being born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So, there is need for you to be born again. 
there is need for you to possess the life of Christ. There is need for you to be a carrier of the image of Christ. There is need for you to be a good representative of God, of Jesus Christ. I'm praying that God will help us in Jesus' name. You see, anybody that is, that is doing God's work and is not born again, such a person, let me say, such a person is just a borrowed vessel. Are you hearing me? It's just like a borrowed what? Vessel. You know what you borrow? Hmm. An act that is borrowed. If anything happens to it, it's on its own. Is that not so? So, there are, don't, don't risk your life. You have to be born again. There is need for you to be like Jesus. Since we know that we'll be the one who will take over after our fathers, after they have gone to rest, after they have gone to meet with the Lord, there is need for you to stand for the Lord, to be a good representative of God. You see, all these churches we call Orthodox Church. Are you, are you getting me? Orthodox churches. And we say they are worldly churches. You know, we, use, we do say that. Is that also? We say they are worldly. They were not worldly when their leaders started. John Wesley, the founder of Methodist Church, who happens to be the holiness preaching pastor, started as what? A holiness preaching man. Is that not so? But when he left, after his death, and young people took over, gradually they watered the, the world. Today, now when you are talking, you'll be referring to them as what? Eh? Worldly church. They were not worldly when they started. And pray, our church will not become worldly. I said, our church will not become worldly. There is need for us as youth to buckle up, to possess the image of Christ. And the starting point is being born again. And having born, a, having born again, you have to seek for the second experience. Sanctification. You must be sanctified. You must be what? Sanctified. And having sanctified, seek for the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying that as you do this, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And I want to charge you that this church, Christian Faith and Fellowship Mission, belongs to you and I. We shall build it. We shall build it. I said we shall build the church together. We shall build the church together. During my time, this church will not collapse. During your time, this church will not collapse. God is looking for a person like Nehemiah. You know the story of Nehemiah in the Bible. Nehemiah stood in the gap when he heard that the wall of Jerusalem had broken he went to take permission from the king. He was in the, in the palace of Susan. So he took permission. He prayed. He worked for the sin of his fathers that they committed. And he went. He built the broken wall. He stood up and he built the broken wall. Thank God our walls have not broken in this church. And I'm praying our wall will not be broken. I said our walls will not be broken. But God is expecting us to join hands with our leaders. To be supportive in prayers. Join them. When they need your attention, give them. Don't, condemn, don't give destructive criticism. Are you hearing me? Don't condemn your leaders. If there is anything that you don't understand, go and meet them. Let them explain to you. And as you do that, I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. I said God will help us in Jesus' name. I hope you have been blessed. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? If you are blessed, clap your hands for Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you for this time. For an enlightenment session that you have granted us the grace to run through. Father, we pray, help us to do our best. Help us to do our best. This is our time. I pray that help us so that we will not disappoint you. Help us that through, this, through our life, 
this church will stand for the Lord. And we pray, Lord, the grace, the resources you have embedded in us, help us to utilize it for the advancement of the church and for the kingdom expansion. Thank you, Father, because you have done it. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are doing that, can you do that very well? Do that for Jesus. Do that for Jesus. You can do more than that. You can do more than that. That is a wonderful session. That is a powerful session. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. All right, without wasting time, we are going into the next section, which I believe that we are going to enjoy beautifully. And what is that? What is that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we I'm imploring the choir members to be getting ready. And uh, I want to say this. We discovered that there are some unregis unregistered participants in our midst. Unregistered participants in our midst. So if you know you belong to that category, please can you kindly... Uh, stand up, go outside to the registration stand and make your presence registered in this program. And as I do so, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we are making arrangements, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we have some very, very important people in our midst. Hallelujah. All right, so we have some very important people that we will be inviting to sit at the front seat that will be grazing this occasion. Uh, these are pe people of dignitaries, our father and our mothers in the Lord. As we know, the title of the theme of this program is Inheritance of Our Father. So we have our father, we have our mothers in our midst that the Lord will be that the Lord has placed for us, and they are here to witness this wonderful occasion. And uh, I want to believe that uh, their presence in, their, in our midst is something that the Lord will be using to, to bless us today. And I pray that in this uh, section, that from the songs of administration of, our, of the choir, that every one of us here shall be blessed in Jesus' name. All right, uh, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge, I think in absentia, probably our father and our mother, that the Lord has placed over this commission, we meet us in, in this section. Uh, in absentia right now, our daddy and mommy, the general overseer of this mission, Reverend A.A. A. Oludu, will be joining on in the course of this ministration. Can we jam our hands together? Can we jam our hands together? <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, right now, we have, we have uh, the National Choir Director. I think they will be coming in, coming in she and her husband, mommy and daddy, okay? Can we jam our hands together? Can we jam our hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, we are welcoming our national program director in our midst also that, uh, that has just uh, finished giving us talk in person of Pastor Kumui Olubumi to the front. Now we jam our hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
All right. Uh, um, pardon me. Daddy and mommy Ajayi. Can we jam our hands together? National choir director as they are coming in. Hallelujah. We also want to recognize the presence and we want to welcome them to the front also in person of Dr. Pastor and Dr. Mrs. Engineer Ola Omole. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. All right. Uh, if we have, if we have in the house, uh, headquarters pastor, in person of Pastor Femi Onipwede, we welcome you also into our midst. Can we jam our hands together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also. Uh, I want to welcome Pastor Okwe Idowu to the front. Also, can we jam our hands together? As I invite our uh, Pastor Tolu Inuade to give us the opening charge for this ceremony. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. If you love the Lord, can you clap your hands for Jesus? Amen. Please, I want to actually welcome every one of us for, to this particular section of the program and this wonderful event to the glory of the Lord. And that's the choir musical concert. And I'm believing that it will be a time of blessing for every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate the presence of our fathers and our mothers in the Lord, all our pastors that are on seat, and most especially at this particular time, I want to appreciate our mommy, mommy, mommy Ajayi, you are welcome, man. Thank you for the love you have for us, and our daddy too. Thank you, sir, for your love. And um, our pastor, who has also, Pastor Kumui, thank you, sir, for the love. Um, in one word, ma, we want to hear from our mommy, the opening message remark. Thank you, ma. Praise the Lord. I want to bless the Lord for this program, which the devil didn't want to come to limelight. But we thank God for putting the devil into shame and for bringing the youths of the mission together. We give all the glory to God in Jesus' name. I want to bless the name of the Lord for every participant of this program, and especially, I am grateful to God on behalf of the youth choir. The Lord will strengthen you more in Jesus' name. Please follow us as we continue in the program. The Lord will bless every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma. God bless, ma. Daddy, please. Just help out. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. I want to bless the name of the Lord for this privilege because I sit whenever there is concert. It is always a time of refreshing whereby God blesses his people. So I see it as a privilege and I pray that none of us will misuse this privilege in the name of Jesus. So I encourage us to listen to the lyrics of the song and be prayerful as they are passing the message to us. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Let's be on our feet as we worship God. Let's be on our feet as we worship the name of the living God. All our room, so down, okay.
Oh, Lord.
the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We want to once again appreciate those that just joined us. We have the team of the adult choir in our midst. We appreciate your presence. Time will not permit us to begin to mention your name. Thank you for honoring our visitation and God bless you in Jesus' name. We also want to recognize our mommy, the Lord Mommy Do. Thank you for coming. God bless you, ma'am. And our daddy, daddy Omole and mommy Omole, thank you. We thank your presence. We appreciate God for your presence. I would believe that it will be a blessing this time in the name of Jesus Christ. At this time, we will be listening to our orchestra and they will be listening to us in songs. We declare that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
see I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of shit And choose the time I need him And so always near He lives to live Christ Jesus lives today He works with me and talks with me And long live narrow sweet Ask me how we know your lips, your lips. 
in the night wonder Silence I wonder I did not yet my brother he will I need Then Jesus found me from sin and bad me Telling the world about his love I love to sing about my gift and make his praises God he He gave his love on Calvary Street Now we from sin I be made free Joy to know this friend of both. That's why I'm telling the world about this song. Yonder in glory, we'll tell a story of my love. My Savior trust in his one with saints and sages. Love we from sea, I be
shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah! Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah! Let us cause his grief on me. Hallelujah!
We want to welcome our mother in the Lord to share the grace for us. With a standing oblation, we want to welcome our mother in the Lord to bless this occasion, to grace this occasion, to share the grace for us. As we welcome our mother, the mother in Israel, Mommy Oludu, you're welcome, Mommy. of God upon your life. The grace of God will continue to increase and multiply in you. And your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. Glory be to Jesus. I am happy I am short of words. I am short of words for praises unto the Lord because of this our young stars. You continue to shine in our presence. And you continue to be our joy we still have more children coming behind you. You shall be fathers and mothers in the Lord. And the fathers that have reared you and the mothers, they will not fade away into oblivion. All of us, we work together, we will make heaven in Jesus' name. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the mercy of the Lord, and the power of the Lord, will rest mightily upon us. And we walk in grace all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We can do better, we can do better, we can do better. Hallelujah. Can we have our seats as a welcome choir for the next ministration?
is the cry of anguish and despair. Tis a cry of precious soul in darkness while waiting for the light of Jesus there. Il the hide of Libras there or say Master, what will thou have me to do? The harvest now is great, oh, he's my brother, the reaper's field. Who will go? What a soul is worth. Who will go? Death of Jesus, death upon the tree. Oh, who will answer quickly? Here I am. A savior, tell them how he suffered on the tree. Will you give your very life to save them? Tell them Jesus came to set them free. Will you take the way? And for the suffering, finding in the cross your holy rest. For suffering here with Jesus brings the glory. His ways are Who will go? Tell of Jesus, death upon the tree. Oh, who will answer quickly? Here I am, oh Lord. Jesus, willingly and gladly we obey. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is our friend, our comforter, and stay. Though he laid a whole heart in ocean, oh, though he lead us over sandy plain, we still will trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Oh, praise his Go to the hands of the head. We have a passion for the Lord, and we read. 
what I sold this world. The youth will go. We will go. The love Jesus that upon the tree. Oh, we will have clean. Here are we. Oh Lord, send on. Oh, we we have some we plead. Here are we. Oh Lord, send us to bow down our eyes for prayers. If the Lord calls you today, will you answer the call? Will you go for the Lord? Will you answer for the Lord? Whatever the Lord is sending you as we go into the next ministration, as the man of God is coming up, Father, give me the grace. Wherever you are sending me, I want to go. Jesus, give me the grace, give me the capacity. I want you to talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord in the name of Jesus. believe you are praying. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. The hour has come. The hour of blessing. The Lord is here tonight to bless you. And I pray that the, the blessing of the Lord from above shall be released mightily upon each and every one of us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray and talk to God. The Lord of your presence minister to my life now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the Lord God of resurrection. Tell God to minister to your life by the power of his resurrection in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray and talk to God. The Lord God Almighty is here tonight to bless you in the name of Jesus and to meet you at the very point of your knees in the name of Jesus. Begin to tell God that Lord bless me tonight. Ignite my life with fire from above in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your fire, O Lord, come upon my life in the name of Jesus. Fire from above. In the name of Jesus Christ, come upon me now. Tell God to release his fire upon your life now. Touch your life with his hand of fire. Ignite you with his fire from above. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' blessed name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. A louder amen. Everlasting Father, we appreciate you and we bless you. We glorify you for this very here one. We magnify you because you are here with us. Living and mighty God, be highly worshipped and be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, we are here this evening gathered together celebrating you. Father, we pray in our life tonight, celebrate yourself in Jesus' name. Do wonderful and mighty things in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to have divine encounter with you tonight. Father, we pray. You know us very well because we are the handiwork of your hands. Father, we pray tonight, by your power from above, lay your hands upon our life, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, and perfect your will in our life, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I've answered. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to hear the echo of your amen very well. Amen. Amen. I will not use. Mm? So I believe you should be able to do better than our mamas and babas. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If our fathers and mothers in the Lord are still saying a louder amen, I believe you should be able to raise your voice, uh, or voices higher than the L. Therefore, tonight we want to look at the word of God, the service, pathway, to find the fulfillment, the service, part will to, to find the fulfillment. I believe that everybody, particularly in this very world, want to live a fulfilled life. As a normal human being, 
Everybody wants to have one or the other good success. But tonight, when we are talking about fulfillment or the fulfilled, a fulfilled life can be seen as being perfectly alive. When you are perfectly alive, before the Almighty God, you filled with the purpose, underline that word purpose, when you fill with the purpose and satisfaction, involving the vision and the requiring, intensive alignment, that you are in the presence of Almighty God, you are living a highly meaningful life. And this is what everybody is looking for that we sought by all. This may include asking yourself a question that why am I here? Believe that you are created for a purpose. A fulfilled life must be able or honestly ask himself or herself that you as a person that you have honestly maybe try as you can have been honestly honest in your dealings with others. That is your dealings with others. Don't forget, I said you underline purpose, the reason why you are here, and, the, uh, and dealing, your dealings with others, that you have tried to live the commandments of God. Every day of my life, I have received and given to all uh, the true love of God. A fulfilled life should be able to ask him or herself the following question and able to answer the question that you have lived according to the commandment of God that you have received and give the true love of God. Life that fulfills the purpose of God is a life that is harmonized with the love of God, harmonized with the purpose of God, harmonized with the plan of God because you were created for a definite purpose. God created you for a definite purpose. Therefore, you are called to be God's people. God called you to be his people. You are not called for fun, but call you, but God called you for a purpose. You are called to be God's people and you are what? The image of the living God. Therefore, before we look at this uh, very message tonight, I want us to quickly open our Bible to the book of uh, John chapter 15, verses uh, 1 to 5. John 15, verses 1 to 5. Because your grateful response is to abide in the Lord Almighty, and God also will also abide in you. When you abide in him, he also abides in you. That is why you are created for a purpose. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No one can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye cannot do nothing. Ye cannot, ye can do nothing. According to the, that very passage, the Bible says, when you are now abiding in Christ Jesus, when Christ is in you, then you can do what you can live a fulfilled life. If there's no Christ in you, if there's no Christ in you, that shows you are not perfectly alive in the land of the living. But for you to be perfectly alive, to fulfill a purpose where you were created, you must abide in Christ Jesus. Do you know what uh, that, uh, that man, the King Solomon, in, uh, in Ecclesiastes, the preacher, chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. The man said, he had this, he had that. He had everything that his heart desired. Upon the whole, he saw everything as a vexation of the spirit. If you get what you can read from the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. The Bible says, the man said, all what he has acquired, 
everything he possessed, everything he had, he saw them as a vestation of their spirits. Some people claiming hmm, to have this, to have that, that I have this, I have that, I have certificate, I have so, so, and so, so. But without Christ in you, you have nothing. Those people that claim to have this or that, yet they, were not, they are not what they are not satisfied because as long as you are not in Christ Jesus, anyone who is not in Christ Jesus, any man or any woman who is not in Christ Jesus, you cannot claim that you have everything. If you are claiming that you have everything, you are what? You are a liar. Irrespective of whatever you have. As long as you are not in Christ, your claim of having everything is false. Anybody that is not born again cannot live a fulfilled life. You want to live a fulfilled life, you must be born again. You must be born again. Anybody that is not born again cannot live a fulfilled life, no matter what such a person possesses. He will still find that he needs something in his life. He will still fight, feel that he needed something within him or self. Because that word born again has not been perfected in his or her life. But before we now move forward, let's quickly look at this message in maybe two or three ways. Number one, the service and evangelism, which is the proof of salvation. When you say you are giving your life to Jesus, that is an area that God wants to do what? To fulfill his purpose. Everybody, may you be man or woman or lady or man, as a Christian, either you are newly born, as a Christian, for you to live a fulfilled life, you must enroll yourself to this very purpose of God for your life in the life of service to God. As a Christian, either you are newly born or you have been born again for long. God calls you to spread the good news, to spread the true gospel. The true gospel is a mandate to all believers. You as a believer, in as much you have given your life to Jesus, this mandate is already with you. God has given you the mandate to go and spread the good news. And uh, this very good news should be treated as such. If I call it good news, believe that there uh, is a good news that you must carry it out, you must treat as the way God sees it. Many times people think that maybe when, when it is time for some people to, to even to deliver the message, some said they are not convinced. So, because they are not convinced, they cannot ditch out the world. They can't speak the world or spread the good news. It is, this is not a matter of conviction. It is the matter of ma mandate. Mind you, there is difference between the conviction and the mandate. When you say that you are not convinced or you have the conviction, your conviction, you may die for what you are, what you are convinced of, but in order to what? To protect it. But the mandate is what you die for in order to do what? To advance it. To, ma to make sure that that thing is or continue. That is different between the mandate and the conviction. Therefore, this is a mandate that everybody, every Christian must fulfill. Spreading of the good news is not a merely call. It's not a, just a call of duty that... Well, maybe my pastor says that I should do, or somebody says, no, it is God that says you are called to do this very work. But a longing, when you are called to spread the good news, it is a longing to see life transforming. See the life transforming. Not that I've delivered the message, my neck is clean. No, you must see. Walk towards it that a life is being transformed. Essentially, spreading of the, of, of the good news 
If you look at the book of John chapter 1, verses 41 to 43, you will see the brother Andrew. Immediately, he came across Jesus Christ. The next step, the next action is to spread the good news. And you, I don't know how long you have given your life to Jesus. Maybe it's under this tent of meeting. God is expecting you. That is John chapter 1, verses 41 to 43. The Bible says, He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find out Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Look at our Lord Jesus Christ and, the, and our brothers in the Lord, Philip, Andrew. Immediately they accepted Jesus Christ. The first duty, the first assignment, the first work they did for Christ is to invite others. They invited others to Christ. Say, come, we have seen Messiah. Come, we have discovered another master. We have discovered the Lord of salvation. He invited others. Likewise, you. God is expecting you to invite others to Christ. Call them to Christ. Ask them to come and see. They said, come and see. Come and see what we have had. The spread of the good news is the, or the word of God. When you are to spread the gospel, you are told, you are, you, are, you are sent to go and spread the good news. Go and share in. Go, go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. It is a venture of expressing the love and salvation. The promises of God to others. That is why you are called to do. You are called to spread the love, the salvation, and promise of God to others. When you do that, then we can see, even we even testify that you are living a fulfilled life. But, up, beside this, God will not see such a Christian as a fulfilled Christian. You see at times when somebody dies, they were right. Different beautiful worlds, a life well spent. You will see fulfilled life. That he lived a fulfilled life. But number one, ask if he has the testimony of salvation. Ask if he has done, carried out this assignment we are looking at this evening. If the answer is no, I will now tell you that such a person has not lived a fulfilled life. But for you to live a fulfilled life, you must carry out this assignment. Tell them about the, about the love of Christ. The death, the life cycle of Jesus, right from the beginning to the end. The death of Jesus, the resurrection, the offering, the hope, and the redemption the, 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 the to mankind. You tell them. You let them know. Then, you can be seen as a true child of God populating the kingdom of God. Let's go to another subtopic. Obey the last instruction. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. The last chapter in the book of Matthew, 18, 19, and 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you, and uh, lo, I am with you always, even 
unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 This is the last instruction Jesus given to his disciple. Jesus' last instruction to his disciple. You, you are one of his disciples. When we are saying disciple, we are talking about the believers, those who are following Jesus Christ, those who believe in Christ, those who accept the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you are part of them, or you are one of them. He gave them this instruction. This is the last instruction that he was given to them to go into all the nations to preach the gospel. I want you to know that evangelism is the, is the urgent need of the hour. Evangelism is the urgent need of the hour. As Jesus said it, go without hesitation. Go. This is urgent need of the hour. It is the what? The heart pain of God. The heart beat of God. That every Christian must obey. That is, obey the last instruction. I come to the military. That obey the last instruction. Therefore, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, has issued the instruction that every Christian must obey. Obey the last instruction. I say, evangelism is the heart pain of God, the heart beat of God that you must obey. We see right from the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell into the hand of their enemy. Since then, God has been looking for a way to reconcile man, to bring man back to himself. That is why he now later sent Jesus Christ his son to die for the world. Though people are celebrating the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but not everybody celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ accepted him. Some are still wallowing in their sins. Yet, they will say, Jesus Christ has carried away our load of sin. And they are yet to be converted. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was given this instruction, repeatedly he told his disciples that they should go. He gave them this commission that they should go. He commanded them. He gave to his disciples, even to the last minute, to take the gospel to, the, to, what? to all nations, to every part of the world. Making disciples, teaching them to observe his word. Do you know that nothing brings joy to our God? Every one of us is praying, praying on one EU or the other, and you want to have testimony. When, when God, when you have now testimony, then say, Praise the Lord. I want to celebrate God. I want to do this, I want to do that. Because God has done this, has done that. Then, you too, you will rejoice. Likewise, God wants to rejoice. If you want God to rejoice, you must obey the last instruction. I said, do you know that nothing brings joy to God and heaven? You look at the book of uh, the Gospels. The Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts of Apostles. Jesus Christ performed many miracles. But none of these miracles gives him joy but the salvation of a sinner. When a sinner comes back home, when a sinner surrenders his life, when a sinner says, Lord, here I am, I surrender. This make heaven and God, the Father of Jesus Christ, to celebrate, to rejoice in heaven. Heaven rejoices but when a sinner repents from his or her sin. When Jesus Christ was telling them or giving them the instruction, 
In the book of Luke chapter 15, verses 7 and 10. Luke 15, verses 7 and 10. We look at verse 7 and verse 10. Luke 15, 7 and 10. Likewise, I say unto you, sorry, I say unto you, that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, that there will be joy in heaven. God Almighty will rejoice. The host of heaven will rejoice. For just a sinner, not five sinners, not ten sinners, but for just one, a sinner that repents, that repented. More than over 99, 90 and 9, just persons which need no repentance. Ten. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. That over just a sinner that surrendered his life to Jesus, the Bible says, there will be joy in heaven. Do you want God to rejoice? If you want God to rejoice, you want heaven to go into the celebration mood, you must spread the good news. You must preach the gospel. Failure to preach the gospel, that shows you make God sorry. If you don't want to make God sorry, don't want, you don't, you don't want to make God regret, you must do this or carry out this assignment. Jesus Christ said it in that way we have read. Even he reiterated it two times. That this is the word that evidences him. The habit of God is that all men repent and turn to God. That is the heartbeat of God. That all men repent from their sin and turn to God, their creator. That's why the Bible recalls in the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Acts 17, 30. The Bible says, At the time and the times of this ignorant God went out, but now commanded all men everywhere, commanded every man, he commands all men everywhere, wherever you are, you may be, to repent. And to this effect, did Jesus came to this world, suffer for your sins, suffer for my sin, and die eventually for mankind. Jesus, after his resurrection, the one or which we are celebrating now, in obedience to the will of God, his Father, who sent him to die for the sin of the whole world, he now handed over the commission into your hand. God Almighty handed this, the work into the hand of Jesus. When Jesus Christ was going, he handed the same commission into your hand. Then what do you want to do with it? About the work. He handed over the work, the great commission, to you as his disciple, to us as his disciples, to preach the word. That's why the president go into all the world in the Mark 16. Go to the walls. Go to nation. Go, to, go and meet the nations. One after nation, the other. Go. Talk to them. Preach to them. Tell them the mind of God. Tell them the love of God. Go and preach the gospel. For you now to know that as you are going, I sent you. Not I only sent you, but I'm going with you. He endorsed. He gave the proof of, of the endorsement that go as you are going now. I am with you. I don't just suddenly send you, but I am with you. As you are going now, I'm following you. And these signs shall follow. But when you do not go now, you are expecting the sign to manifest. Sign will not manifest. The sign will not manifest unless you obey the last instruction. If you look at the book, that's a Mark 16. 15 and 16, that is the command. Go, preach, and make disciples. But in 17 and 18, the proof of the endorsement, 
that as you are going now, I'm with you. The power of science and wonder is with you. I, the miracle worker, following you. So don't be afraid. Jesus gave them the proof of his endorsement. But the most important things, the most important things, that very, very important, essential to our God, the most important thing that is important to God, our Creator, is being neglected. That is at beats, is at pain, the heart yearning of the Lord, being neglected by many Christians. Are you not among who refuse to carry out the instruction? And you call yourself a son, a daughter of God, and you refuse to carry out the last instruction. Many Christians today, they refused to preach the gospel. Even when the opportunity comes, they refuse to do that because they are saved, they are saved forever. That is self-deceit. Go and tell sinners the love of God and everything about God that can revive the dead souls. All sinners are dead. They are living corpse. If you are still among them tonight, I want to employ you to come out and surrender to Jesus Christ because all sinners, they are walking or living dead. They are living dead. Bring them back to God. But today, we are expecting the rapture and the judgment of God to descend upon the sinners. When we refuse to tell the world the love of God, surely the judgment will come. But let them know, let them hear about the love of God. Let them know that God loves them but hates their sins. But we refuse to do that. We are expecting today, we are expecting Jesus in the rapture. We are expecting him. Yes. Then, when we leave, the judgment will descend upon the sinners. Why do you have so much interest, or why, why are you so much interested in the judgment of God than to tell the sinners the love of God? That's what some of us have. We refuse to tell the sinners the mind of God. Surely judgment is part of the mind of God. But if you refuse to tell the sinners the love of God, you too believe the judgment is very close to you. Because the Bible says, the judgment will start in the house of God. Therefore, tell the sinners the love of God, not the judgment. Judgment later, but the love first. For example, a boy who offended his father. The father is now looking for him to punish him. Fortunately, you come across the boy. Say, oh boy, what are you doing here? Ah, your father is looking for you. Oh, I pity you. He will nearly kill you today. Do you think such a boy will come home? He will not call. That is a sinner before God. Such a boy will run to where or anywhere that he believes he saves. Because what you have said scared him and he ran away. Likewise, the sinners before God. You don't want the sinners to accept that well, everybody is going to hellfire. I will not be only the person in hellfire. Let the sinners see the love of God above the judgment of God. Tell them the love of God. Don't behave like Jonah. Jonah loved the judgment more than the love of God to come upon the people of Nineveh. But you don't behave so. Preach the gospel. Then don't use human methodology to preach the gospel. You don't need to deceive people to the gospel. Tell them the, the true gospel. Open the eyes for the true gospel. 
Don't deceive them to the, to the gospel. If you deceive them, one or two or three months or three years, they will go back. But tell them the mind of God. And your word is not enough. The word of your mouth is not enough to gain souls into the kingdom. Your action, your behavior, the way you live your life daily. There is a word that says, don't preach to me, but let your life preach to me. If your life does not preach, nobody will follow what you are saying. But if your life preaches to your friends, to those who are around you, then you only speak little words. You don't need to bother yourself. They will accept. That is why we have problems today. You know, today now, it's somehow difficult to win souls for Christ. You say, okay, look at that man. He's a pastor. Look at that person. Pastor. Deacon. Deaconess. See what they have done. Because they saw them committing sin. But you, as a true child of God, let your life reflect Jesus Christ. Let your life reflect the true gospel. That is why you see the apostles in the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26. They don't have the tag. They don't have the banner. No signpost. But the Bible says, people look at them. They look at the way they live their life. They said, and jump into conclusion that they are Christians. Who told them that they are Christians? But because they, their life preach to the people around them. Let your life also preach. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The people here do not shout hallelujah. Shout a louder hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 11 verse 29 The call of God is without repentance. God does not call you for fun. He calls you for a purpose. Likewise, he has the world for you. I'm looking at our time. If not, we we still have time to look at, but let's quickly go to the, to, to the rewards. As a, as a Christian, as a believer, who obey? Since you obey, God has a reward for you. If you look at Proverbs 11, 20, verse 30, Proverbs 11, 30, the Bible says, he or she that will a soul for Christ is a wise man. Is a wise woman. Do you want God to see you as a wise man? To see you as a wise woman? That uh, the fruit of righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth soul, he that winneth souls is wise. That is, there is a reward for those who win souls. We have been talking. You have heard it. That they have crowns. That God will give them crowns. The crowns of life, the crowns of rejoices, the Lord will give them the crown of glory, the glory will give them the, right, the crown of righteousness. We have Bible reference there, but because of our time. The crown or the incorruptible crowns, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, that the crown of incorruptible crown, apart from all these crowns, do you know there is inexpl inexplicable joy for those who obey the rules, who carried out this great commission? The disciples, I want you to know that the best cure for sadness and depression is evangelism. The best, the only antidote, the great cure for, sad, for sadness and depression is evangelism. Go, give it a try. The joy that follow is matchless. I come to that uh, Luke 10, verses 1 and 17. The Bible says, when the apostles, the 70 disciples, when they came back, they told Jesus Christ that devil even submits and subjects to us. 
Therefore, I want to know that you have no excuse. Today, some people could not deliver the message. After two or three years in Christ, two, three years in Christ, or five or seven or whatever the years, you cannot point to one, two, three, four, five souls that have won for Christ. Why you were given the mandate, you refuse to carry out the work. Do you know that the world is sick? Before we round up, before we pray, the world is sick, and Jesus Christ is the only remedy, which is the gospel. Our part, your part, is to carry out, is to carry the message to the world. Failure to do so, you are like a doctor who keeps medicine away from the patients. And what will be his glory if the patient dies? If the patient now dies, God will ask. If you fail to preach the gospel, God will ask. Go is not a suggestion. The Bible says go is not what? It's not a suggestion or a recommendation. God says go is a divine order that you must go, that you must go and preach the gospel. We need obey or else means the greatest joy knows to men. Go means go and depopulate. Hey, go and make Satan sorry and regrets. Go and populate heaven. Go and make heaven rejoice and celebrate. Will you go? Where will you go? Are you ready to go? If you are ready to go, let's be on our feet. We want to pray. You are saved to save others. And therefore, Jesus our master, now commission you, commission me, to reach out to others. You are called to obey. You are called to preach. You are called to make disciples. Sinners are languishing outside. Many people languish in sin. But you are not given this ministry. Close your eyes now. Maybe you are here this evening. You are here to give that to Jesus. Sinner cannot do this work. Sinner cannot do this work. If you are still in sin, you too, you need to come to Christ before you can go to others. This very assignment is not meant for you tonight, but your, yours is what? Is to surrender, to confess your sin, and talk to God. But you, as a Christian, that you can see yourself, you can, you, you can beat yourself that you are a bona fide child of God, you are sent to go and depopulate hell. Go and make God celebrate and rejoice. I say, where will you go? Close your eyes now, begin to talk to God. I don't know whether you are faithful to this world. If you are not faithful to this work, that shows you too, you need to repent. Talk to God now, now, that Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. When God now says, who will I say? Who will I say? The Bible says, nobody answers. Even the angel could not answer. But the Bible says, Jesus came. In Isaiah 2, God says, who will I say? Isaiah came, that Lord, here I am, send me. God wants to send you a work now. Are you ready to go? Will you go? Will you now go? Do you want to make God happy? Will you go and make disciples for Christ? Will you go and make God rejoice and celebrate? Will you go and say, Lord, I'm ready to win souls for you? Will you go? Don't see yourself say, I've saved. You are saved to save others. You are not saved only to get to heaven. Your brother is here. Your sister is here. You must walk along with, with them. For them now to get to heaven. Close your eyes very well and pray. Talk to God. That Lord here I am this evening. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Pray for the mercy of the Lord. Maybe you, are, you, maybe you have come short of this world. You know you are guilty. Tell God to have mercy on you. If you are, if, 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 if you are, if, if you are still okay with this world, you are still doing it. Then pray for more grace. That God should give you, the, give you grace. Pray for more grace. That God Almighty should give you the grace. The grace and the enablement to continue in this world. The Lord will give you in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray to God. The Lord will help us. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue to talk to the Lord. Continue to talk to the Lord. Continue to talk to Jesus. Lord, I will go. I will go. I will go. I will go. For the assignment that you have committed to me. For the assignment that you have commissioned to my hand. Jesus, help me to go. Give me the grace to go. Give me the grace to go. In the name of Jesus. Lord, give me the grace to go. Give me the grace to go. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I will go, I will go, I will go. I receive the grace, I receive the strength, I receive the capacity in the name of Jesus. Father, help me, help me, help me, help me. I don't want to fail so that I will receive eternal reward. I will receive eternal reward. Jesus, help me to receive eternal reward. Father, help me to receive eternal reward in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to receive eternal reward. Help me to receive eternal reward. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me to receive eternal reward. In the name of Jesus, Father, I want you to give me the grace, give me the capacity, give me the capacity. I hope you are praying, Lord, give me the strength, give me the strength to go, to go. Take away every laziness, take away every scheme of the devil. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, help me, help me to fulfill that which is in your heart, oh Lord, to make the the kingdom of God to be happy in the mighty name of Jesus that so that the things of this world will not distract, will not take away my attention from the things of God. Father, I pray that to help me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Let's have our seats. Hallelujah. And we are going to the last ministration for today as we welcome the choir.
obtaining power, power to obtain your inheritance. I want you to be in the mood of prayer as the next minister of God comes up. Please let us bow down our heads and pray to God that we can receive power, the power that we need to obtain our inheritance. Lord, the Lord should give us power. Lord, give me power to possess my inheritance. I want you to pray. I want you to pray as the next minister of God comes up. Lord Jesus, give me the power. Give me the power. To obtain my inheritance in the name of Jesus. Bow down your heads and pray. Lord, I'll receive the power to obtain my inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. for the privilege you are giving unto us. 
even to be your presence at this very hour. Lord, I'm asking that you bless us with your power and your authority. Do so for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray to the Lord. Close your eyes and pray. Say, Father, visit me tonight with your power. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, I need your visitation tonight. Visit me tonight with your power. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes. The topic before us this evening, possessing power to obtain your inheritance. Possessing power to obtain your inheritance. Do you have any inheritance in God? If the answer is yes, then you need the power of God yes. and to possess that which the Lord has provided for you. Open your Bible to the book of Matthew. Chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 12. Matthew 11 verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven sovereign violence and the violent take it by force. From the time of John the Baptist now, the kingdom of heaven sovereign violent. And the violent people, violent Christians, are taking it by what? By force. So, for anyone to assess or to possess Your inheritance in God. Such must be endowed with power of God. I need to tell you this. Without the power of God, there is no way anyone here on earth can fulfill his destiny. If your life is void of power, I mean authentic power, the power that comes from the throne of God. If your life is void of that power, there is no way you can fulfill divine purpose here on earth. You may have many dreams. You may have many visions. Many prophecies may build upon you. They will have seen a lot of things concerning you. That you become this, you become that. I want to tell you today that without the power of the living God upon your life, it will be very difficult for you to get to that level that the Lord has prepared for you. 
there was somebody called Laiwowe in the olden days. In the days of Dr. D.K. Ulukoya, this, shall I call it man or boy now, was very brilliant, very knowledgeable. And he did the exam here in Nigeria, he passed. In fact, in further mathematics, he scored something like 90 something plus. Very brilliant indeed. He got scholarship. He went overseas to go and study. The family rejoiced, celebrated with him. And he went. And even in overseas, among the white people, he performed very brilliantly. Do you know one thing? It seemed that he was fulfilling the destiny. Without the power of the living God. His younger sister told him something when he was living. And he thought that the sister was playing. Lie away was so brilliant that when you are asking something about cosine, he doesn't need to look at the four figure table. How many of you know four figure table? It's okay. He doesn't need to look at for God table we answered. Live away was very brilliant. Even Dr. Dr. D. Kolukoya can confirm that. And if I'm talking about Dr. D. Kolukoya, it's a first class product. But that live away, it was ex exceptional. He went overseas. But because the power that be in his family noticed what was going on. And he went. To oversee. But he couldn't return life back to Nigeria. Life, he was, he, he was, he was very good when it comes to swimming. And he went to river to swim. And that day, he missed it. And he hit his head upon maybe a rock, whatever, whatever. And the head scattered. And they brought life away back to Nigeria. Dead. They brought him. They brought him back. Some years back, someone was given testimony in MFA that he, she was a witch before, but now he has repent, She has repented. And when Dr. Dick Olukoya looked to the parent that was giving testimony, he could, he could recognize that this is the younger sister of Lai Wowe. So the younger sister of Lai Wowe killed his brother. Lai Wowe was killed by his younger sister. Why? Because of lack of power. Maybe you are there this evening, you have been making some you are performing excellently without Christ, without power of God. I want to tell you, you are like a chicken. That the owner is feeding every day. So that the chicken can become robust and fresh. You are being nourished for the day of slaughtering. And one day, such a chicken will be killed. So, a lie without power. You are just like that chicken. Devil is looking at you. You may be succeeding now. Whether in business, academically, in whatever, whatever you are doing. And you think without Christ, without the power of God, you can obtain your inheritance. You are just like that chicken. You are like, lie away. Very brilliant. But without Jesus. Very brilliant. Without the power of God. And he was killed. And Bible said, from the day, from the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffered a violent. And the violent people, even the violent, no 
not the lazy people. Not the prayerless people. Are taking it what? By what? You can only take your inheritance by force. That you see it does not mean, does not mean that you will take it. There are so many revelations that you have had before now without fulfillment. There are so many prophecies upon you without fulfillment. Power is ability to do something. Power gives you access. It makes impossibility to become possible. Let me tell you this. Anything you want to do here on earth, whether business, in your academics, whatever, whatever, in the house of the Lord, if your life is void of power, I want to enjoy you. I want to possess you. Drop it. Just drop it. Some weeks back, maybe last week, somebody was giving testimony. I heard it. It was, she was at the altar. When the power that be in her family, they came to give her cup. And from that altar, she became a drunkard. drunkard. From that altar, in, she left altar. And that is what will be happy, happening even in her village. For 13 years, she will, she, she, she will drink and, become, and, and she will become naked, even in the public. From the other. So, if you are coming to the other to minister, or you are doing anything, without the power of God, I can tell what will happen in the next two or three years. Somebody came to pass Dr. Dike Olukoya when he was still teaching. You know, this person, he, will, he has affected so many lives. Should they let me talk to you? There are some people in your class, they are not ordinary human beings. They are there to affect the children negatively. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, you don't possess the power of God. You will just see that you are going down gradually. But today, I want to tell you the ancient part, the ancient way to obtain the power of God. If I'm talking about power of God, I'm not talking about just speaking in tongues. You know, this, this is your issue of speaking and speaking in tongues. Yeah, it's like our people want to be using that one to deceive us. I will, I will, let me, I will tell you the truth today. The issue of speaking in tongues in church. It's like you people want to be using that. Let me tell you this: if we marry the people, the people with familiar, they are speaking in tongues. I guess the witches they are speaking in tongues. So that you are speaking in tongues, you can't use that one to deceive, or you can prophesy. Don't say the Lord. Don't do that here today, and don't speak rubbish. If you speak it, you become dumb forever. Don't speak rubbish here today. If you try it, that's the, that's the last time you talk. So, in the show today, people are speaking in tongues. Even the tongue from the rivers. And you want to use that one to catch us? No! That is not the real power. It's part of it, but it's not the real power. You are speaking in tongues, you can't cast out demons. We cannot speak in tongues. You are speaking in tongues, they are pressing you down. What kind of speaking in tongues? Where did you receive your own? They gathered together in the upper room and the spirit came upon them. 
the next thing is miracle signs and wonders. We are signs and wonders. People begin. Peter preached 3,000 people in a day. God converted. I will be waiting when people will come here and sing. I will be crying. When people will come here to sing and the power will descend upon us. When people will come here to minister, when I will see Usher, eh, Usher, that when the witches see you and they begin to cry. Let me see a prayer band that will be in the congregation and they will know you are a prayer band. Let me see a worker. No tongue, tongue talking workers without power. We tongue. We talk. Before you say one thing, uh, we talk. It's good to speak in tongues. I love that. In fact, if you are praying in understanding, more than speaking in tongues, you are not doing good. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are shy. You are speaking, you are, you are praying in understanding for like two hours, you are speaking in tongues for three minutes, in one hour. You are still a child. Yes. Pray in another language. In fact, you be our, our focus. What we are doing regularly, like 10 hours in a day, 18 hours in a day, in your secret place. And when you come, you come with power. Not the one you are saying in the church. It's part of you can say it in the church. I love that. But don't use that one to deceive us. That's not the real power. They gather together. So today, I want to show you the ancient part. All these modern parts, modern ways. Man, start telling me, speak after me. Eh? Oh, you, you, you bring one case that I are speaking in tongues and you begin to learn it. You are learning the language and you are now coming to speak. Learn very well. You can't carry the anointing, the person that has, has spoken it. You can't carry it. But let me listen to me this evening. And ancient part that our fathers have walked in that ancient part that even without speaking any tongues do I need to mention the name of Jesus before any miracle happen? No, I don't need to mention the name of Jesus. Do I need to speak in tongues before any miracle happen? I don't need to speak it outside. If I do, do. If I don't do it, go. If you carry it, you carry it. You don't know it, you don't know it. The ancient way just one part. Ancient part to assess and to possess the power. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit. The fire of God will begin to burn now. Close your eyes. It will touch your head now. Close your eyes. Ah, Jesus, thank you. 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 The hands of the Lord will be laid upon you. The hands of the Lord will be laid upon you. The hands of the Lord will be laid upon you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That fresh, fresh power, fresh fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, signify this person. Look for this person now. Look for him. Look for her. Let him, let her carry the fire now. Yes, let him. Let him, let her carry the fire. Look for her. Look for him. Let it rest. 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 The hand of fire. The hand of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From today, you will enter into that realm of prayer. Prayer without difficulty. Aha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The ancient part to assess the power.
Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the ancient ways and for the for the old paths where is the good way and walk journey and you shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk journey modern people God was speaking to them and they said no as some of us are saying no to the voice of God they don't want to walk in the ancient way they want the modern way of doing things. They said, no, we will not walk the army. Stand. Jeremiah 6, 16. Stand in, in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk the army. So let me just show you the ancient way. The old path. That rugged path. To obtain, to possess the power of the living God. If truly you want to assess your inheritance in God, and that part, and that way, is the will of sacrifice. Is the way of sacrifice, living a sacrificial life. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice only acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service present your body a living sacrifice unto God Not a dead sacrifice, but a living one. Present if anyone wants to carry the fire and the power of God. There is need for us to come to the altar of God and present ourselves a living sacrifice. People in the world, they don't use their things as a sacrifice. If you see anyone in the world that is powerful, go and ask them. Their secret is sacrifice. Shedding of blood on the altar. That, this is the secret of the people, the occult people in the world. They know so many things about sacrifice. The people in the church, no. It's like we are strangers to this thing. Living a sacrificial life. That you come to the Lord as a sinner. And you lay yourself on the altar of God. That Lord, here I am, save my soul. That is the foundation. You can't build your house. On, on the, in the air there must be foundation and that foundation is repentance from sin you must lay down your life on the altar come as you are and lay down yourself, your life a living sacrifice unto the Lord that is holy Let me tell you this. We 
without laying yourself on the altar, fire can never come. I mean authentic one, not fake one. Power can never come. You must lay down your life. Everyone must lay down his life. Everything about you laid, laid down on the altar of God as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice, add voice in the realm of the spirit. Without a sacrificial life, you have no future. If you like, speak in tongues. The Lord help me to know that church is a spiritual school. Where you can learn about the spiritual things. And when you learn it and you apply it, you get results. And today I'm showing you that ancient part. Whatever work you are doing for God in the church, I, today people just do things casually in the church. Just allow one demon to undo you, you will know. Just one demon. Let them undo you. You know that work you are doing is very serious. You don't do it casually. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 1. Solomon prayed. After the prayer, he offered sacrifice. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. When read from Chronicles chapter 5, chapter 6, you see what Solomon did there. And in verse 1, he prayed. He offered burnt offering, sacrifice on the Lord. And Bible says, fire came. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Even the so-called minister, they couldn't enter because of the glory of the Lord. But before the fire came, there was sacrifice on the altar. Elijah gathered the, 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 the evil prophet together. He made an altar. They made the altar. Their God cannot talk. And they brought sacrifice to the altar. And the man, man called Elijah speak to the Lord. And Bible says fire fell. Sacrifice. Anywhere you see sacrifice, be expecting fire. When you come to the altar, when they bring sacrifice to the altar, that sacrifice, that burnt offering will be slaughtered. Will be slaughtered on the altar. And the blood will gush out. Will gush out. Why can't you come to Jesus as a living sacrifice? And die on the altar of God. You must become dead before the fire can come. You come as a living sacrifice. But when you come to the altar, you must be killed there. Your flesh must die. Your body must be mortified. Gossip, telling lie, fornication, all those useless things must be gone in your life when you come to the altar of God. So, without coming to the altar of God, don't expect the power of God. Don't expect the power of God. So, the price you need to pay today that I need to pay for the Spirit of the Lord to come upon us, for the power of God to come upon us, for us to obtain that power. If at all you know your inheritance in Christ. One of your inheritance guys that you, you perform miracles. If you are three years, four years, be performing miracles. 
signs and wonders. You are downloading the things of God and you are giving to us. You are offloading it. That is our heritage in Christ. That when you sing like this, you are you are speaking prophecy. Somebody is catching prophecy in the, in the auditor in, in the torch. When they say you, they say God. When they say you, they say the glory of God. You are a glory, glory, glory of God carrier. You are carrying the glory. You are fire carrier. You are power carrier. When they say you, they see solution. But your life must be laid on the altar first. That is the place God will slaughter you. We slaughter you. That is the place God will kill you. We kill the flesh. He will kill your ambition. Whatever that whatever in you that will hinder that fire power to come on the altar, everything will die. But if Mr. Flesh and Mrs. Flesh is still operating in your life, you can't carry authentic power. You are speaking in tongues, you are lost. Speaking in tongues, pornography. Speaking in tongues, you. Allow God to do. If you forget anything, don't forget it. That's the ancient way. If I'm telling you, pray. It pray. For your prayer to be translated to a sacrifice, you have to go to a level. You will get to a level. It's part of it. Uh, pray like this. Fast. Uh, what is the other thing you can do? Everything. If you can do it for long, it will be translated to a sacrifice. Everything. If you can pray for 18 hours, that is a sacrificial life. If you can fast for 7 days without eating, that is a sacrificial life. If you can read the word of God, sitting down or lying down for 18 hours a day, that is a sacrificial life. You are laying down on the altar. the kingdom is the way of the sacrifice and without sacrifice you have no future let me tell you this position without power is very dangerous you are occupying a position and you don't have the ability you don't have the power of God very dangerous. The power of God we are talking about today and the fire of God we are talking about today and the Holy, even Holy Spirit. Let me show you something. You know it in the Bible. Do you know in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, 1 to everything about that chapter, to 10, you will see that somebody laid his life for the power to come. We are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, isn't it? It's a great sacrifice. Without the death of Jesus, there is nothing like, like Holy Spirit and power. He laid down his life on the altar, on the cross of Calvary. That is why Holy Spirit can come to the world. So, he laid down that his life and he told disciples, go to Jerusalem, go to the upper room, Go and wait. Go and tarry. For even for them to tarry is a sacrificial thing. So before the fire and the Holy Spirit can come to the world, somebody laid down his life on the altar. So that is the ancient, that's the only way. There's no other way. Oh, that only that sacrificial life, that's the way. If you can say, Lord, everything to you. He can demand for your salary, sacrificial life. It can demand for your time. It can demand for anything. It can even demand for your certificate. 
Many people want to carry a power of God. If God is asking for their certificate, they can't give God. And you are, you are looking for power. Who will give you power? No. The, the most precious thing that you have, if God is demanding for you today, will you release it? God releases only begotten son as a sacrifice for you to be speaking in tongues today. What are you going to lay down for your Savior? That's speaking in tongues you are speaking. Somebody died for that. He gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice so that he can pour out his spirit and power upon us. Without sacrifice, forget. If God said go to another city, another town today, in a village, to go have a pastor there, can you go? And you want power to increase? No! Everything is not about prayer. Let me tell you this. Prayer is good. I love prayer. But everything is not about prayer. It's not about prayer. Go and try a sacrificial life. If he's demanding for my sacrifice today, glory be to the Lord. If he's sending me to a village today, glory. By the time I obey, power will come without prayer. It will come without prayer. The anointed to do the work will come without prayer. Because I have obeyed. That obedience is a sacrificial life. If you want to carry power, what do you want to use the power for? What? What? Somebody died, laid down his life as a sacrifice for the power to come. What do you want to lay down? What? If God, as a God, He couldn't pray for sin to leave the world, it's not prayer. It's a sacrifice. It's not about prayer. Oh, yeah, take away sin. No, He did not pray for sin to leave the world. He knew the right thing to do, and He laid down. He, he, he said, "It's only because of Son." And the man of God, and and the Son of God, laid down His life. So it's not about prayer. He did not pray to take away sin. He laid down His life. Sacrifice. There are so many things that sacrifice will do for us. This, this power, if you want authentic power, the ancient power, live a life of sacrifice. Live a life of sacrifice that God can demand anything from you at any time and you obey. I know you are a student, your sacrifice is so precious to you, but let me tell you this God can demand for it at any time. Then you look at your parents, you look at your, maybe if you are married, you look at your wife or your husband, what can I do? And if you say no, you say no to power. If you like, go and fast for 40 days and 40 nights, power will not come. They were waiting at the upper room after they have served Jesus. Now, call you waiting, Lord. Waiting for power to come. One day, second day, third day, they are still waiting. Until chapter 2. And the power came. When the, when, the, when the time was fully come, the power was released upon them. But don't forget these people, they are genuinely saved. They knew God. They are serving God. They follow God. In the time of storm, they follow God. When things are good, they follow God. When things are bad, they follow God. Sacrificial life. If you like, go and be praying fast. But you, you can't obey simple instruction. The Lord is saying, my son, my daughter, give me your 10 hours per day. You say, ah, my day can will. You don't want to carry the power. Give me your night. You say, ah, oh, I'm coming. I will sleep. You don't need power. God will demand something from you. He must demand. After all the prayers and fasting you have done, he will still come to demand something. And that thing is demanding is a sacrifice. To you, is a sacrifice. That life of sin you are living, you are enjoying. He said, My son, my daughter, this thing is hindering you. Give me. Lay it on the other. You are saying, No, my boy, my girlfriend, my this, my dad. I want to pass the exam. I must cheat. Ah. You are aborting your destiny that valley. You can't possess the inheritance. And there are better things in Christ. I mean better things. 
What a joy for me to wake up in the morning and I'm speaking to my father and he's talking back to me. Even when, I, even, even when I'm not talking to him, he's coming to me and saying, my son, this, this and that. It's not a great it taste of joy that you are hearing the voice of God that is giving you revelation. Ah. What you are hearing is that devil talk to me. Devil say I will die. Devil say I will die. Ah, ah. Why are you hearing the voice of devil? We devil. Jesus don't forget this life of sacrifice after now you can come and say my son this, do this, do that without altar without sacrifice power will not come, fire will not come you can stand up on your feet you really need to you need to organize When the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in unity. Pray and suddenly, Holy Ghost, power each day, sit upon them. And they began to speak in, a dark, in, a, in different tongues. The first thing you, you must be born again, you lay down your life as a living sacrifice. If you have done that, if you have not done that, I will give you some meeting now to do it. Close your eyes, everybody. That is the foundation for if you want the Spirit of God to come upon you and become another person. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Tell him that I lay down that fornication. That gossip. Let tell a lie. Life of sin. I'm laying down. I'm laying down. I fear yet it book. I fear yet. You want to rope it. Oh my Lord, I'm not to be a top. I fear yet it book. What letters? If they ask you what have you been doing since we started, ah, you'll be ashamed of yourself. If they, if they open your daughter, your prayer life has gone down. Your prayer life, you can't pray again because of all those things in your life. You can't pray, you can walk. Ah, activities will destroy your life. Come back to the law, workers, children, come back. Come back. When you are praying, you are studying the word of God. When you are living a holy life, it's a life of sacrifice. Eh? You have gone already. You have gone to the world. You have gone to the world. No fire again, no power again. Who will now give you your inheritance? Who? Who will give you? Who will give you? See how you are praying now? You can't confess that sin. You must be born again today. It is under us. For Holy Ghost and power to come upon you. A life of sacrifice. Lay it down on the altar. Lay it down. Wait, wait. Which kind of work are you working in the areas of the law? What are you doing there? The fire of God will come upon you today. That is the foundation. I want you to repent. Before the pastor that we take over, we call. I want that repentance now. Because without laying that, that life, ah, fire can't call. Power can't call. And not they can't call. This is not a thing of joy. If you are, if, 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 if people, people are working because of you. Eh? 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 And you are sitting down. Sitting down. You don't have a prayer life. Sitting down. You can't study the word of God. What are you doing? Which work are you doing? Lay it down. Lay it down. Five hours per day. Lay it down. Eight hours per day. Lay it down. Sometimes for three days you lock up on yourself. Lay it down. Altar. Sacrifice. Lay it down. All those like you are useless life. Moving about. Walking about. Evil company, evil association. You can't carry the power. You can't carry the power. You cannot possess your possession. The fire will fall today. Because the Lord will use his servant. The fire is coming. It's coming. It's coming. 
But do this thing. Repentance. Repent. Repent. That's the first job. If you want to lay down on the altar, come to the altar now. You want some things in your life and you want to lay it down. Come to the altar now. Let me just give you like two minutes. You know there are some things in your life. You want to lay it down on the altar so that fire can come. Come to the altar now. Come to the altar. 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 Come and lay it down. Wherever you are in the auditorium, you know your life. You know yourself. And you want the fire of God. Come and lay it down. Come and lay it down. Come and lay it down. It's not about being a sinner. No, 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 no. If you are a sinner, come. If you are not a sinner, come. You want to lay something down. And you want the authentic fire, power today. Come, 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 wherever you are. The Lord is looking for you. You must carry the power. Maybe you are there, you are speaking in tongues. Eh? You are speaking. You are speaking in tongues. And you don't want to come out. They are speaking in tongues, which is we kill you. They will destroy your life. Come now. This is your time. I know what God showed me. I know. He came to me today around 2.20 a.m. He came to me. And he talked to me concerning some things. If you need me, cry, cry. I come to the soy kun lele, soy kun. Cry. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. The fire will come upon you afresh. Forget about your position. Position will kill you. That's just it. Apai. Eh? Apai. Only don't call Apai. Or shadow she Apai. Your position, you go past to Apai. Leave your position. Let us carry the fire. Let the fire fall upon us. Let it fall. Cry, cry, cry to the Lord. Only that you have to give your life to Jesus. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Cry, lay down your life on the altar. Yes, yes. You will see what will happen tonight. Because God is coming. He discussed your matter. Eh? I was at home when he discussed the matter. Around 2 a.m. Eh? He, he, he corrected me on some things. He told me some things. And he showed me two people. Eh? Eh? He showed me he showed the way they dress, they, they dress. He showed me. He rebuked me. He corrected me about my message. That is what he, that is what he came to do. He corrected me about the message I'm preaching. Yes. And he showed me some things. He corrected me. That is God. Around 2, 20 here today. He came to correct me. He came and he corrected me. Concerning the messages I've been preaching. No, I've been preaching fire, I've been coming, power, I've been coming. But that may not, may not, may not be the agenda of God. Yes. Yes. Lay it down. Lay it down, my brother and my sister. That Lord, I'm coming back. Say me. If you can cry, cry. You are the people God is looking for. So, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come, 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 come. The job has started. And you will see now. Fire will fall. Upon the head of people, the fire will begin to burn. The fire of God will begin to burn. Yes, lay down on the altar. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lord, 
I surrender all to you. I lay it down at the altar. I lay it down on the altar. I lay it down at the altar. I lay it down at the altar. I lay it down at the altar. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, 
Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost.
Let's have your two hands on the court. I begin to prophesy. Hong be mi fo. Hong be mi sare. Awo lu ambe. Gloria jeme. Hong be mi fo. Let us let's leave the Holy Spirit. To work. It's at work. Hong be mi fo. Hong. Oh, oh, Luambe, Gloria, Yemi, oh, oh, Bemi, oh, oh, Bemi, Sade, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, begin to move in the midst of man, begin to move to as many you want to afflict, to as many you want to set free, to as many you want to anoint. To as many you want to anoint, Holy Ghost, hey, Awo Oluwabe, Gloria, Shemio, Hongbe mi fo, Awo Olu, Hongbe mi fo, Awo Oluwabe, Gloria, Kawa o. Hombe wafo, hombe wasare. Hey, hombe mi fo. Of God. No, this man they have faith. The Bible record about men that bring death back to life. Men that bring death back to life. The Bible record about women that brought back their what? Their daughter, their sons back to life by this, by reason of faith. The Bible record. Concerning Gideon, men that both us, their sons stay in Nigeria. These are men of faith, but still they were unable to obtain their promise. They don't have only God in their time. They don't have only God in their time. But these men were able to walk in supernatural. Awo Oluwambe, Gloria Yemio. Home be me for home be me sare. Rest up at your hands. Amen. 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 Rest up your two hands unto God. I will not be able to move around. Can we go? On? Let's rise on our feet. Let's rest it off. Just reach up your two hands wherever you are. It's God that you're moving at the midst of men. Holy Ghost, every response now, release yourself. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, as many that you want to release their inheritance, to as many you want to lose, to as many you want to deliver, to as many you want to change their status from my right to my left, begin to receive, begin to receive, receive. When I say receive, you say I take it. Receive, receive. Receive, 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 
receive the fire is here. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Baptism of death, baptism of death to carry the inheritance of God. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Yes, the fire is coming upon you now. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 that's the hand of God. Take it, take it, take it. Give it. Calibo Sida. Calibo Sida. Calibo Sida. Calibo Sida. Calibo Sida. Can you join us together? Join us together wherever you are. Just connect. Just connect. Connect. Connect your hands together. Wherever you are now. Connect. Make sure you're touching somebody. The fire will move from, from the front to the back. The fire will move from the front to the back. That's what the Holy Ghost will do. Just turn your hands to somebody. Turn your hands to somebody. Yes. At the count of one to seven. Twice when they are ready. This opportunity may not call. Anymore. When I say the name of Jesus, you say I receive it. I'm saying it seven times. And God be depositing that grace, that inheritance. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes. Let the fire move. Let it move. Let it move. Let it move. Yes. 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 Make sure you connect. Make sure you are connect. Make sure you are connect. Yes. Over there. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Take the fire. 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 Yes. Yes. In the fire of God. In the fire of God, 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 in the fire of God. Yes, 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 yes. Take that fire, take that fire, take that fire, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. To us when they are ready, to us when they are ready. A brand new letter, a mama mashi kaba, a hashi ka brand new letter, a man de sedi kaba, man de tejito, man de tejito. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is his one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. To touch some brothers there, I may not be able to touch you. In the name of Jesus, take your fire, take your heritage. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we move to this side? Can we move to this side? Can we move to this side? There are 10 people at the midst of the congregation now. 
you are testing your hunger for this airtime. Just then, I want you in the front now. Ten people, I want to pray for them. Ten people, just then. Ten. Ten. Can you raise up your hands? Holy Spirit, I leave them to your hands. I leave them to your hands, Holy Ghost. Awa Oluwa o. upon your head now. Don't say anything. The fire will begin to sit upon your head. As in the day of Pentecost, don't say anything. The fire will begin to come one after the other. It will come like a rushing mighty wind now. The fire of the living God. Yes. Yes. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Take it out. Take it out. Take! Aha. Aha. Let it come like rain now. Like rain. Like rain. From this front to the end. Let the fire, let the mantle, let the fire, let it your people now. Take! Everything that the Lord wants to do this night, for you and for me. Yes, it is time. It is time. It is time. Collect your own. Collect your own. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take! That's right. Yes, yes. 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 
It's resting. It's resting. It's resting. It's resting. It's resting. Your life never remains. It's resting. Yes. The hand of God. The hand of God. With the spirit of prophecy. With the spirit of prophecy. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. It's resting. The hand of God. It's resting. Take, 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 take. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let there be silence. Allow the angel of the Lord to pass through this congregation. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Aha. The angel of the Lord will pass through. They will pass through. Yes, that will belong to you will be released now. You are here in God. By the power of God. They will pass through now. Aha. Aha. Take it. Take your own. Take your portion. Aha. Aha. That is the time. This is the time. Aha. You will collect it. You will possess it. That which they have taken from your lineage. You are collecting it. That mantle. That enemy. The, the power there be. Have manipulated. In your lineage. You are getting it back. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Look at them now. The royal crown. The royal crown. Receive. 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 Royal crown. Receive. Royal crown. Die. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Thank you for your work in our midst tonight. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for releasing your power into our life. We thank you for how far you brought us to, into this service. Thank you for walking through our midst. Thank you for touching the life of your people. We thank you for signs. We thank you for wonders. We thank you for miracles. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we have received of your power tonight, I pray that we will not recover from this encounter in the name of Jesus. I pray whatever the plan of the enemy might be to take away this inheritance that we have received, I scatter them now by the power of the living God in the name of Jesus. I pray this well with us right now in the name of Jesus. And as we go for rest and for a while now, I pray that the power of the Lord will be with us in the name of Jesus. And over our food tonight, I sanctify it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Can we all go back to our seat as we jam our hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. Jam your hands together. Find somewhere to sit. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for bringing us thus far. For how the Lord has helped us for today's service from the very first message until the last message. May the name of the Lord be praised in Jesus' name. And I pray that all blessing that we have received today is permanent for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, we are going for rest, but it will be a very short rest because we are having a vigil tonight, but it, will, it won't take too much of our time. Hallelujah. And right now, we are going to take our dinner. But before that, please, let us listen to the following announcement. Number one, the first announcement tonight is about our registration. We have a lot of people here who are here to register, and we would like to take down our names, our phone number, our locations, where we are coming from, the branch we are coming for. 
from. So I want to implore you tonight, if you still have the chance, there's this chance for you tonight to go out there and register your presence, please. We want to make sure that your presence in this camp is well registered. So just go to the registration center, register your name. You will be given a, uh, the program booklet just for 300 Naira. Praise God. Praise God. And the second uh, announcement tonight is about meat for the soul. Uh, a daily devotional written by a mom in the Lord, Mommy Oludu. It's just 1,000 Naira. If you go to the registration stand, if you are yet to have a copy, please go there and purchase a, a copy. Hallelujah. Also, I have this announcement thirdly. Uh, a brother among us gave one of the ushers his phone, I think, for him to charge. And he, he could not recognize the usher again. Please. Please, if you know that anybody, gave, anybody among us gave you phone for him to charge, any of the ushers or any, anyone that has volunteered in the ushering department, if you know that anybody gave you phone to charge, and even you two could not recognize the brother, please, I want you to just locate, just locate me, and we will know how to deal with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, thirdly, uh, as, like I said earlier, uh, the, the last, session, last session we had tonight, we are going to continue in form of a VG between the hour of 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. 9 p.m. That's why I said we are going to have a very short rest. So 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. so that it won't affect the program for tomorrow. And we know that tomorrow is the last day. And it's going to be an impartation service. Hallelujah. It's going to be an impartation service for the inheritance of our Father, impartation service for the inheritance of our Father between the hour of 9 to 11. And uh, lastly, uh, all executives are to meet immediately after dinner at Yoruba Church. All executives are to meet immediately after dinner at Yoruba Church. And uh, right now, can we stand up to share the grace for tonight's service as our food will uh, they will bring in our food and so that we can go and eat. Can we stand up and share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, our campus brethren from Ikere, Futa, please, can you go out to bring in our food? Thank you. 